What's happening, everyone? Big fucking news, mate. Big news. Dead big news. We're doing Have A Word Live. We're doing a live show before we take it on a full tour, which we're still putting together. The Underbelly Festival at Cavendish Square in London have invited us to come down. Now, we really, really, really need you to get some tickets for this and help sell it out because there's people in the comedy industry who've gone, <laughs> Adam Rowan, Dan Nightingale, they're never selling this many tickets in London. Let's fuck them up the arse. There's a link in the description on YouTube, on Spotify, wherever you're watching or listening to this, you can get tickets in the description. Okay, you can also get it on the Underbelly Fest website. You can just search for Have A Word, the podcast with Adam Rowe and Dan Nightingale, or whatever they've called it. Have A Word Live in London. What's the date? When are we doing it? Oh, now I talk. Yeah. Sunday, the 19th of September. And the only reason I'm talking is because he fucking forgot the date. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be sat here like an absolute fucking plum doing hand gestures for the blind. Sunday the 19th of nope, September. for the deaf. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm not allowed to talk. Sunday the 19th of September. The Underbelly Festival, Cavendish Square, London. Me, Dan, special guest, stand-up and a live podcast recording. It's going to be great. Please buy tickets and help us sell this thing out there. Cheap as fuck. If you live within an hour, two hours of London. Three. It's three. Four. If you live anywhere in mainland Europe... You should be there. If like, you're no alive, <laughs> the UK is not a mainland Europe, but I know what you mean. Yes. If you're Spanish, yes. <laughs> if you're French, yes. English, no. <laughs> <laughs> it made sense in your head. Only if you're from mainland Europe, because we love doing this shit to Belgians. <laughs> Fuck off. What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a shit boozer, you get an extra episode every single week, exclusive. No one else gets to see it apart from the Patreons. And you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well. That's what you get. And on top of all of that, you get access to the entire back catalogue of the Patreon episodes. We've been doing that for like a year now. There's Loads of content there. There's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk. They only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. Did you get that shirt free with your second child? It's very dad with two kids that... <laughs> As I put this on this morning, I went, I'm going to get ripped. For for look. Get out, Finn! Finn, get out! Go and build the furniture in Studio 2! <laughs> you know what you've been told to do! Get out, Finn! Love you, Finn! Fuck off, Finn! <laughs> I've got to say, love you at the end. Make sure you cut that out like you always do when we're on Finn. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. I will shit on your arm! <laughs> Cut that out, though. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's just going to end up fucking industrial tribunal, isn't it? Yeah. Turkey and Wales! Shit countries! Back in your box! I've <laughs> got <laughs> <laughs> a really sore throat. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll lock that the door. That shit. I've got a sore throat from, from bullying Finn. Cut that out. Yeah. Cut, make sure you cut that out. Okay, Lloyd. <coughs> Can I try and guess where the shirt's from? It's definitely 1985. <laughs> it's from Burton. He what? meant a shop, but I said a year. That's what you can expect on Have a Word and borderline racial bullying to our intern. <laughs> Cut that out. It's from Burton's. Do you know what I need to clarify something? Finn gets paid. <laughs> we need to clarify. He gets paid that. well as well. There's so many people who think we brought him in. And we're just like, right, you do all the editing. Carl will tell you how to edit it. I mean, I do all the editing. Do all the editing. Yeah, but I do people all who think the editing. Finn all doesn't get paid and does everything. No, I do it. And we do Finn pay gets him. paid. Yeah. He gets paid yeah, he 17 grand a month. <laughs> he does. We yeah. make fuck off from the podcast. Yeah. All the Patreon money and every advert yeah. goes to Finn. Yeah. And more. We pay out of our own pocket. That's Costs yeah. me and Dan five grand each to run this. He's getting paid. <laughs> and Finn's he's getting, a millionaire. He's getting paid well enough that we can give him shit. Dan, yeah. do you know when I say 
Do the shop Burton's? Yeah. I say it in your voice from your joke years ago. Burton's menswear. Is it your it's your joke, isn't it? From years and years and years ago. Yeah. I can't remember. I've it's, it's This so isn't Burton, so this isn't good enough quality. It's something they were being a dad and going, You're Burton, it's You bitch. <laughs> you this is joke. F and F, innit? This is Tesco. What's, what's F and F? Oh, Tesco. 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 Yeah. No, it's ASOS. Or is ASOS. It? Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen Fuck on off. screen. Yeah. Those well, ASOS was for like young people. ASOS for dads. <laughs> How do I remember your <laughs> material? It's ASOS. Right. I think the bit was something about you were saying it was something they would use shopping, you're like, you know Burton, it's something they were like being solid clothes. He's got or... combat shorts on as well. <laughs> stand up, Dan. <laughs> Dan, stand up. The, pra- the practical. <laughs> You know, I've got things in the pockets. <laughs> I've got a bloody tape measure. Boss pass. <laughs> it's gone, oh. isn't it? It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> what else am I wearing wrong? No. <laughs> what else am I wearing wrong? It's not. The, the I, insult is that it's so right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> it's that it works. <laughs> This is the first time I've dressed my age on this podcast. <laughs> it's very sports day. He's still got the app though. He's still like, yeah, oh, yeah, hey. yeah. No. Very, very dad at sports. Very day. sports day. Yeah, yeah. It's so uh, that is such a brutal slap. <laughs> <laughs> it works so well. Oh, I also have started to get paranoid that I don't know what's going on with shoes at the moment. You have a nice new balance on Because every time I look at your shoes, it's like, in my head, you've got fucking a built-up shoe. Air, train just Air Force Ones? Train... Oh, right, okay. They're a bit... They're, like, standard fare. Your, your shoes are nice right now, your new balance. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I see your webs... There's like just Ooh. more, more and more of it. See, that was nice. Bloody! There's like a massive wedge on him. Yeah, I like a big shoe. I like a big shoe. A really big shoe. Really I, big I'm shoe. starting to feel like that's another sign that I'm not. No. <laughs> you can win a really big shoe. Really big shoe. <laughs> can I win two shoes? No, one big one. Uh, so. By the way. Yeah. Can I? I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this on the podcast before. That aircon sounds loud, Carl. Yeah. Don't just it? turn the aircon off, please. Right, Carl. It just, it's making me feel like it, yeah, yeah. everyone can or hear Carl, it. Or Carl, go to Studio 2 and get Ben! Ben! Ben, give me a t-shirt, I'm getting ripped! <laughs> I need young men's clothing. Um, I went into a shop yesterday. Like, a, 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 a shop shop. Um, shop shop? Yeah, right. What's a shop? And what's a shop shop? Like a clothing store shop. Right. I was going shopping. I went to Manchester yesterday with my girlfriend. I've heard of it. Um, and uh, it was fun. And we went shopping in the day. And can I, can we just have a word? Like the name. Bloody hell, hang on. Right. Can, we, can we have a word? With, and I'm not having to go at the workers here. I'm having to go at the managers and the leaders of the companies of stores that make their staff approach you. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Do you know when you walk into a shop and they cut like there's like seven members of staff all like spread throughout the shop. So I was in Tazuti in okay. the Arndale Centre in Manchester. That's how it's pronounced. And every single member of staff at some point come over and went, You need any help, sir? Let me know. And at one point I was looking at a shoe and he went, If you want to try them on, I can go and get the, the left one out of the back for you. And I was like, Who doesn't know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is anyone walking in going, the one like a person shop? Oh, dear. <laughs> they only sell right shoes. Yeah, you know, I'm not a big fan of talking to assistants in shops, but really, I would have bought these, but I need two because I've got two feet. But I'm a bit shy and I don't like approaching people. I'm just going to put it back and leave. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, do you know they're for your feet? <laughs> Let me know if you it's need close to Like when they immediately come over to you and they're like, let us know if I can help. I'll just, I'll, I'll be able to help. With any inquiries you may have. <laughs> and then he fucks off and you get five more yards in and someone else comes over. Hi, sir. I can help as well. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, Do I you know. work for tips? I know how shops work. Yeah. And if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be in here. I'm an adult man in a shop. Fuck off. I'll figure it out. Right, yeah. There is a, there is a, there is a, 
You know, when you go in a shop and you're desperately trying to find anyone that can help and you can't, there is a, another a end of the spectrum <laughs> where you're is. like, I need a fucking anyone. Yeah. And like, you know. Carl Donnelly used to have a brilliant bit about the Apple store. Years ago, I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning it because he, he doesn't do anymore. But he's like, at first, I, I worried I'd wandered into an, an iPod Apple museum. Because yeah. <laughs> it's missing the key components of a shop, like tills and people that fucking work. <laughs> and everyone in there is not buying stuff, just looking at everything. It does have that vibe, doesn't it? Everything's perfectly symmetrical. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I I think there's a it's an American-style customer service. It's like, what you've got to do is you've got to go straight over, just be super friendly. And you're like... I, c- I can it. handle that sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm in a bit of a, a good mood and I'm like, yeah. But most of the time, even though I'm quite a gregarious sort of, I, qu- I can have like, I'm quite, I'm not like a grumpy person shopping, but you still a lot of the time just be like, I don't know you. I don't want to know you. You're not helping. I just sort of want to be left alone. And it can easily tip over to like, hey. But even if I'm in a really good mood, that can piss me off and ruin right. my day. Because I, what I hate more than anything is fake positivity like fake customer service style the worst is when they're giving you bad news and they're like i'm so sorry sir but i can't help you because this the like in zara yesterday the fucking prick on the tail who wouldn't let me return something because he was like you don't have the receipt i was like it's got zara on the label it's your thing it's still thing i just want to swap it for a different size now well if you haven't got the receipt i can't swap it oh Why? i thought they didn't need receipts That's anymore That's it's also your bollocks. stuff it's not like i'm taking a nike shoe back to the shoe shop or right. to size it's <laughs> Zo- it says zara are you suggesting i've made them at home and put the label in myself that would be clever right I think maybe, that, yeah, that, I don't think that's what they're worried about. People keep making our clothes and then bringing them back. I think they're worried about someone nicking something, walking around the block, taking a label off and being like, this doesn't fit. You know, I think that's more, I don't think they're worried right, about okay, you producing okay. so, clothes. So let's go with your theory. Let's go with that is what's happening. Right. So you think that they're worried that people like me are going in the sh- store, right? Yeah. Picking up shorts is in a size that isn't mine. <laughs> Walking around the block and then coming in and going, can I swap these shorts that I've oh, stolen? I thought you wanted for the re- size that is mine. No, you I think thought- that is what their policy <laughs> is to protect against <laughs> thieves who are just adding layers into their thievery. Oh, I thought you were trying to get your money back. No, I want to swap it for something that oh, fits. Sorry, right now I'm like. I thought, I was like, I thought the guy was, I could see the sense of it being like. I didn't give him the shorts and he went, no, and you can't have them either. (laughs) How do I know you didn't rob them? He went, can't do anything. No. These are us. (laughs) (laughs) You thieving guns. So you didn't swap them? No. That's madness. I am not allowed to, because I haven't got the receipt. Have have you, You can't take a bank statement in, no. Ha- what? You can take a bank statement in. <laughs> yeah, go. <laughs> no, you can, can. But you're talking yeah. to Adam, bro. <laughs> I don't know when I'm going Imagine Adam turning up with a, a well, I haven't got a receipt, but I've got these bank statements. That'll be dead hard in your bank statements to go through and look for the word Zara. Yeah, but I've been to Zara like four or five times. So I'd have to, I didn't just buy this pair of shorts oh, when I went in. Oh, right. So oh, you'd have to work it. Yeah. I'd have to wear, I can't do that. <laughs> you'd have to wear everything else you bought so we could add it up <laughs> and subtract what he wanted. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It gives them. <laughs> Why are you wearing a scarf? It's the hottest week of the year. <laughs> it's on the deceit, lad. I'd like to uh, make a return. Let me just take everything off. Get these shorts. Uh, I, have sw- I have sweated in them a bit. What do you reckon they'd do if you went into a shop wearing kecks, took them off and they had the label on, and you had the receipt and you went, I want to swap them. Underpants. Proper under- no, underpants. No, not like, like kecks. Trousers, trousers of right. the jean variety. Do you reckon they'd right. take them? You just, you just like these. <laughs> what are you sending them for? You don't like these them. These don't fit. No, you don't like them. <laughs> don't like them. It's Zara. I mean, at, yeah. t- at TK Maxx, you could. They'd be like, for oh, an give exchange or a refund? A refund? <laughs> so just, I don't want them. Yeah. <laughs> you walk out and just with walk- no pants on and 12 quid. Would you reckon they'd do it? Cheap, that Cheap jeans. Right. <laughs> Cheap, that one. <laughs> the, the label smells of your arsehole. Because <laughs> yeah. nice. I can't be a policy. The label can't stink. <laughs> That's our, uh, we have a non-stinking label <laughs> policy. I'm so sorry. You cannot return something if it means you walking around in your undies. Like, is he walking off in his boxes? Just got to return. He's well happy, 24 quid in his pocket. No pants on. Adam Rowe wins again. <laughs> Didn't even have to get me bank statements out. <laughs> have you got the receipt for anything <laughs> in no. your life? No, and, and that's not an accusation, because I'm like, ah. 
I, I don't have receipts for anything. No, I haven't. But I always keep it. Like, I don't... Like, I get them to put it in the bag because I'm like, I won't lose it then. And then as soon as I get in... I take it's never the in the bag. I just throw the bag out. No, but it's never in the bag either. Put the receipt's in it. There's no reason. Yeah, I do want the receipt. And I'll put it in my filing system of in that bag. And, then and you know what it is? In a bag of bags. I'm, a, I'm such a fucking dickhead because they all offer you the option for an email receipt now. And for some reason, despite the fact every time you go to a bar or buy anything online, you have to put an email in now. <coughs> when it's in an in-person shop and they go, because uh, they don't go, what type of receipt do you want? They go, can we take an email to send you the receipt? I'm like, no! Yeah, same. You do not get my data. I want pants, not emails. <laughs> Fuck you. Away with you, beast. You've t- turned into a real traditionalist. I want a paper one. Print it now. Yeah. Fuck off. When in reality, it would be so much more convenient if in Zari yes, I could have just gone onto this machine thing and gone, yeah, mate, <laughs> yeah. here's your receipt. You fucking I'm punk. exactly the same. When it's per- Can I take your email address? You're like, oh, you're just going to spam me. Oh, you're just going to put it on file. Oh, I'll get loads of offers through. Like I do every time I buy something online three times a fucking day. What are you going to do with the pants that don't fit? What am I going to do with them? Yeah. Oh, hat. Hat. Yeah. Nice Zara hat. <laughs> hat pants. I've invented a new thing. Hat pants. Hats. Yeah, because it'll still be cool on your Pants head. for your head. <laughs> hat pants. And they've got a belt with them. So even if they're a bit big on my head, just tie the belt. Would, be ha- would it be hat pants or pants hat? <laughs> I suppose hat pants would be yeah. hats that you yeah. wear as pants. Yeah, it'd be yeah. pants. Just be a pants hat. Wordplay is not one of our strong points on have a word. <laughs> Let's get back to Bellend or Bumhole. <laughs> Which I suppose is closely related to the pants. Manchester's quite good, isn't it? Yes, I fucking love living in Manchester. It's great. Went to a blues kitchen. To a blues bar. There's Where was that? Singing the blues. Sound. Cocktails on a Wednesday. There's an offer. Five pound any cocktail. Oh, it's the best thing about being a comedian, isn't it? When you're like, I go out on a fucking Wednesday. When bars are like, customers. Nice one. Instead of having to fucking queue like a bell end on a Saturday. It's really good. Went Love to, it. Went to a place called Sugo Pasta Kitchen as well for right. tea. Food was amazing. Is this Northern Quarter or? It's Ancoats. All right, yeah. Um, Sugo Pasta Kitchen. live there. So the, the blues bit is by Dean's Gate and Sugo the Pasta Kitchen's up on Ancoats. Um, wow, how did you get? That's Uber. All right. You, what did you um, eat? That's I a got big old fucking walk. The house Sugo. Which was their pasta with uh, pulled beef shoulder, uh, pulled beef shin, uh, pork shoulder, <laughs> and andouille sausage. What was that? Like? Sauce. What? The, 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 bi- the bicep. It was delicious, but the staff were just, they had like this chip on the shoulder. Oh, it's you, too far the other way. Yeah. Do you know, like, could you, you know eat what them? What's happened recently, right? Do you know because we've all been very supportive of the hospitality industry? And, like, there's this whole thing of if you're a dickhead customer now, you just end up on the internet and you look like the dickhead. Because the years of the customer is always right. is long gone. And in general, that's right because a lot of customers are absolutely oh, bell Mate, whoever came up with that, like, turn of phrase, wh- how did you ever come to that? Like, the customer's always right. What are you talking the about? The customer is very, very, very rarely right. The customer, the customer is, is regularly also sometimes a shithead. not doing anything wrong. Yeah, and, yeah. like, <clears throat> so. You know in Bacaro in the film? Yeah. Have you ever had the olives from there? You don't like olives, do you? No, sorry because I don't know. So they're lovely and they come with salt on, mm-hmm. right? So in there yesterday, we ordered olives as our like pre-starter thing and they brought them. And then we asked for salt because we were like, we'll salt them like they do in Bacaro. And the woman looked at me as if I'd gone, have you got any dead children that we could rub all over the table? Like she was really angry yeah. that we wanted to salt our home. That's a hell of a special, that, isn't it? <laughs> the old dead children rub. <laughs> Peri- we do peri peri salt and my dead children. <laughs> yeah. I was being hyperbolous. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Why what does she work for all it like why does she give a fuck? She why? It, was, it was it was it was that we'd asked her to do something that she didn't want she to do. For like could you go over there and grab that salt that you do give to customers, otherwise you wouldn't have it? And she was like Salted olives. She was like, You want salt? Okay. Who was she? Ivan Who Trump. was she? <laughs> Melania. <laughs> she said, that's what she spoke like. It's very, very good. Impression. She was a vampire. Where was she from? What? Where was she from? Anne Cuts. I didn't ask. Where'd I think you... she might have been Italian. 
Oh, okay. Why did you do like a Russian voice then? Because I'm bad at impressions. That's a very honest response <laughs> to you, <laughs> there, Carl. <laughs> Give him six weeks. <laughs> what you want? So you really, want to sell it? So it was really funny this morning. Um, as we were leaving the hotel, it, at the minute there's a policy of you don't share the lift because of the... Um, the one, uh, one household, a lift. Yeah, because of the coronavirus Great. pandemic. Laura loves doing that. Uh, no. Let the doors close. It's well, swaggy. so it's, we were on floor nine. It stopped on floor six. And the couple on floor six went, oh, we'll just wait for the next one. And then it stopped again on floor four. And the couple went, can we just squeeze in? And Sam <laughs> was already pressing the button. <laughs> she, she, but she looked right in the woman's eye. Because Sam was a little bit tired, right? <laughs> so she looked right in the woman's eye. She went, I'm really sorry. <laughs> She's pressing the closed door for the woman. Can we just squeeze in and say, Really sorry. Can I just say, if, <laughs> Adam, your if Adam ever fingers me, I know exactly what it's going to look like at, with the apology. Really oh, you sorry. don't go in with two. No, you're going with three and making your way down. Yeah. <laughs> it's like working down the gears before you get to the traffic lights, isn't it? Yeah. Fist. Yeah. Which is fifth. Was, yeah. it, was it a nice hotel? Do you know what? Yeah. But it was a five star hotel. Did she treat you? She did. Bloody hell. It's a five star hotel, but it fucking wasn't. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? Like it was a, a four, but they need to fucking pipe down with this five shit because it wasn't. Was right. it a clean four? Yeah. <laughs> Room was quite big. The spa was lovely that we got free access to, although we couldn't book any treatments because they're only doing treatments on the weekend at the minute because I don't know whether you know this, but masseuses, masseuse, whatever it is. Masai. Uh, Graham. Masai. <laughs> they can Is only busy? spread COVID midweek. Oh, on it's a, a weekend, nightmare. On a weekend. COVID, yeah. And as we know from comedy clubs, you ha you can't have people sat next to you because COVID is like crab COVID. It just goes sideways. Yeah. yeah. But diagonally, four fucking centimetres. <laughs> COVID doesn't move diagonally. Grow up. Yeah. Right, okay. So you couldn't get touched by a... I want to do yeah, a so, massage. But the spa was nice. And apparently the restaurants in there is quite good. But it, the rest of it was just decent. Like right, the, okay. The shower door was weird and it made the bathroom flood a bit. And I was like... That's a half a star off. Yeah. <laughs> and then like there was an espresso machine, but they only gave us decaf. Ugh, cool. Oh, a well, that's a three star, isn't it? You know what I mean? I had a spat in the face on the way out. Did you? <laughs> One bottle of water. Mini what? bar wasn't stocked. Like, you know what I mean? Did you get this on a deal? No. That's a disgrace. Right. It's one 116 bar. pounds and 75 pence for the evening. It's important that 75 pence for the minute. Yeah. Get it. That's the bottle of water. <laughs> and you did you bump into some comedians in the spa? Because I saw Sophie Jade Adams Willen. tweet. Sophie Willen and James uh, Jade Adams were just in the same spa. <laughs> fucking random was that picture. I was like, when is this from? I was like, is this from the Tez show? And they've had like a chill out in the hotel or something. They're like, now we've just bumped in. There's literally 400 comedians in the country. And there's Adam Rowe in a pool. Like, all right, yeah, a couple of colleagues. I was sat in the hot tub with Sam. And Sophie Willen just stopped in front of me and went, fuck off. <laughs> and I went, why? What? Because <laughs> she was surprised I was there. Oh, <laughs> like she doesn't want you to be there. <laughs> Sophie Willen doesn't have beef on Twitter. She hunts people down in real life and waits till they're semi-naked and sweaty. Fuck it yeah. You know, because I was seeing Sophie in a new context. Because I'd never seen Sophie almost naked and soaking wet. So. Nope. So she's yeah, you wouldn't do that. She went, yeah. fuck off. And I looked at her for a solid eight seconds of like, And I went, fuck off! And then Jade Adams appeared. I love it that, I love it in, the, in your life, it, there's not a, like a reaction to someone going, fuck off! You're like, let me just compute this. Who is this? <laughs> Former enemy, someone from Twitter. Yeah. Um, Had a decent day. Met nice. Brennan Reese for a pint. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I did hot water last night. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah I could, have you got that? Is that throwing star all right? Yeah, just. You've got that. Keep dropping it. Yeah, it's not annoying. That's the main thing. <laughs> Twat in a wall, Carl. Um, I did uh, hot water last night. It was so fun hanging out with Paul Smith. It's like, don't know, 
it, it, back to that thing of like the dressing rooms is I've missed that as much as the actual gigs. Um, but fuck me, I was not ready for a, a late night last night. Like it's testament to what Hot Water have done in Liverpool that they can have a late show where the closing act is on past midnight on a fucking Wednesday. Yes, mate. Yes. Because everyone's happy to be back in comedy and they're getting their sea legs. Everyone was just like, oh yeah, I'm booked for 10. I'll do 15. <laughs> uh, Masai Graham was on. That's why when you before when you said about masseuses, Masai, uh, Masai Graham is a Birmingham-based comedian. One-liner guy. He's a one-liner guy. And a, a new comedy night or a, like a new material night is a bit of a menace because it, it like... He, he works well and some jokes are like all over the shop and some nail it. But I've never, I've never really seen him on a weekend gig. So it's like, it's, it's one of those that doesn't necessarily translate to yeah, the yeah, weekend. Yeah. And in the People are happy if they've paid a fiver to see it, but not 18 quid. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to disrespect him. It's just where I've seen him. I haven't yeah, gig with him a lot no, on the weekend. No, I'm not having a go at Messiah. I'm having a go at audiences because they get like, I've seen all there. TV name headline acts who do one-liners. And on a weekend, the attention span just isn't there. It's also... To do, to do that much. And he's not joke. a new comic, but he's like a... I don't know if you call him like a full-blown pro comic. I just don't see him on a load of pro bills. But there is a weird style with new comedy, isn't there? Sometimes you, you go to open spot nights or new comedy nights. It's like that you can tell that they've not watched a lot of weekend comedy. They've not... They've surrounded themselves with other open spots. And... Like, Toby Jones was talking about this on the phone last week. He's got a new material night, and they've got some new comics. He was like, it's really, like, weird watching them. Just their set is all about their lives. And if they're trans, it's about their life dealing with, you know, their transition. And and if they're from an ethnicity, it's just about that. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's new comedy. Yeah. That's a lot of new comedy nights. And then you don't see where the professional act is there. You're like, who's actually just doing bits yeah. about their life? It's all, everyone's like, almost like everyone's practicing to do the BBC New Comedy Award <laughs> by going, uh, yeah, I actually had a bisexual dad and this is my story or whatever, like. Did you have a comic in mind there? Yeah. Bisexual dad comic? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, like. <laughs> no. <laughs> would you rather? Imagine. Have a bisexual if, dad if or Dave a bisexual mum? Dave Twentyman turned up going, I had a bisexual dad. <laughs> um, would you rather have a bisexual dad or a bisexual mum? I just think it's hard to imagine your dad being bummed. <laughs> uh, I think, I think <laughs> it's more, it's lot, this might be wrong. It's a lot more fluid with women, isn't it? I think there's more of a line with men. I think if you're with a man who gets bummed, it's more difficult to look past than if you're with I a woman who kisses I think because ladies. of the heteronormative nature of Western society, yeah. right? <clears throat> Saved it. Yeah. I'm not that. saying it's right, but Saved I'm saying... Saved us going, yeah, you can't... You don't get bummed. <clears throat> the thing is, actually, it's about the heteronormativity of uh, Western society. Yeah, it is. It's just more intrusive as well, I think. It's more of an act. What, something going in your ass? Yeah. Rather than coming out of it. <laughs> I mean, it does sound homophobic, doesn't it? It really does. I don't mind me mum scissoring, but me dad bumming. I mean, it is that is homophobia. It's a weird strain of it that you don't hear loads. No, I'm all for the gays as long as none of them are bumming my dad. You know, but it is a weird. That is a that is to say that it's like oh well, it's a bit more fluid with. You know. No, I'm not saying I'm right. Or no, it's no, I'm, I'm just saying. But it, I think that's the it, general consensus. Not general. I'll, I'll just jump out this hole in a minute. I actually did stand up about that for a while. About how the only person I don't want to be bummed is my dad. Did you? I don't remember me, that. Me, dad bit. and my little brother. Genuinely, it's on Club Comic. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's justified. I just don't want me dad to be bummed. What? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because he's not gay. Exactly. <laughs> so if he'd been bummed, like something's gone wrong at the pub, hasn't it? Exactly. He's yeah. lost a dark match. Yeah. And there's a heavy forfeit. Wow. Those lads don't fuck about, do they? No. Down at the social club. Dad in the ass. What would you say to him if he walked in and went, lost the game of darts, got bummed? <laughs> what would you say? Like fucking hell, dad. On a Sambuca lad. Win next time. Yeah. 
seem very uncomfortable, Daniel. Oh, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Double tops. A little bit of that. Like, there are people, like, it does happen, though, doesn't it, that your parents, after your, they, your parents split up, and they're like, yeah, we're Elton actually John. gay. Elton John was married, had a few kids. Yeah. Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Was Har- it real? What? Oscar Wilde. Is he what? Was he real? What do you mean? <laughs> I've just, I've heard loads of quotes. Do you think quotes. he's a character? I thought he was like Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Right, cool. Yeah, I'm not even going to answer that. Why? I'm just going to leave it. Why? Comment below. Who was he? What did he do? He was just a thinker. He's a, a writer. What did he write? Uh, he wrote plays. Uh, I think he wrote novels. I think he wrote poetry. It's just a famous sort of Who's it, but it, but late, late Victorian Edward. Was he Edwardian? Like just a, a leading mind of the day. He's very famous. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard his quotes and that. Yeah, he wasn't. He was real though. I yeah. think he wrote The Importance of Being Earnest. That's fa- one of the ones. I thought that you were going to say Idol and <laughs> The Oasis song. <laughs> no, The Oasis song. They, they yeah. released it posthumously. Is he real? <laughs> I wasn't sure. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I, I had a feeling he was. He is. Well, he I was. Sorry. Sure. But he's famously gay, man. It's a bit, a bit of a different, though, because he grew up in an era where you could lose everything if it came out that you were homosexual. Yeah. So a lot of them had, what do they call them, beards. Yeah, ladies who didn't marry. Yeah, I don't think he got to 26 and went, I've had a change of heart. I think he was always, you know. Yeah, we'll say with Elton John. Yeah. I'm, right. I think, I'm not speaking for him, but as you say, they have beard, don't they? Because it's not, back then it wasn't as um, progressive and normal. Yeah. If you were gay then, you couldn't sing. I'm not trying to underestimate what it's like to come out now, but it's a shite sight easier than it was back in the day, innit? Yeah. I remember watching like The X Factor not a few years ago when like a man would sing... Uh, I think Britain's Got Talent was one as well when Callum Scott sang Dancing On My Own or Dancing On Your Own whatever the song is and the lyrics are I'm in the corner watching you kiss her whoa right <laughs> thanks for that Nailed so it. and Simon Carl was like a bit weird that because like that's a, a girl song because she's watching him kiss her and that's why she's upset but now you, a man, are singing about watching him kiss her. Right. Yeah, and Simon Carl's like, it's a bit weird, but you, you can sing. And it's like, yeah, but what if the guy kissing the girl in the song is bisexual? And it's the heteronormativity of Western society that made Simon Carl uncomfortable. Does everything you have to sing about? Simon Carl. Mate, Simon Carl, you're on thin ice there, fucking pointing those fingers, aren't you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is he's there with his, like, spray tan and he his pecs. He looks like an odd man now. Um... There's yeah. been rumours for years that Simon Carl's gay, hasn't there? Really, yeah? Yeah. Where? Where were the rumours? I've just seen them in the papers. On the walls. On the walls of pub toilets. <laughs> yeah. Simon Cowell is gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard. But, like, he's never really had is a Simon missus, Cowell has real? Is he? Is he real? I think he was a thinker. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. But, like, yeah, he, he's never really had a missus. He was shagging Sunita, famously. From Coddy. <laughs> <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah. Dev was pissed off. <laughs> It's so much easier to be... I can't believe he said that within the realm of entertainment. Like, fair enough, he was like the foreman of some fucking timber yard. You'd be like, yeah, they're not that progressive, but Simon Cowell should definitely know fucking better. Like, I think he's just... He's such a businessman, isn't he? Right. So he's like, I know what sells. Yeah. And gay stuff isn't that. Right. Like, that, that's what he's doing, though, isn't he? He's like, you're a male pop star, so we need to... That's how he thinks. He, he, he's a, a music mogul. Mogul? Mogul, yeah. Mogul. So he's like, it's a music we mogul. need women mogul. to want to fuck you all of the time, forever. You yeah. could see why if you were gay or from the sort of LGBT, why that sort of attitude, it's it's like institutional homophobia, isn't it? It's a fucking annoying. Percent. But it's only like in the 80s when I was watching Carry On, like it's so funny how people were like, no, like Frankie Howard's like, oh, wow, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and Kenneth Williams, like, oh, oh. I mean, like, are they gay? And my nana and granddad were like, no. Kenneth they're just Williams. a bit, you know, a bit feminine, yeah, gay. No, they didn't. They, I don't think they were like, they were like, no, no, it's just a bit of a, you know, just a bit of a lovey because <laughs> to them, it what they weren't gay, they were like, no, no, they won't be gay. They're like, they definitely were, nana, they were like, ooh. 
I'd love to go back to like the sixties and seventies and just watch a conversation and just how fucking weird it'd be. Yeah, they had to hide it. So fucking and it's tragic. In all of like every time someone writes a thing about like Friends, the TV show, and they're like, uh, "Oh, it was really fat phobic and homophobic, and no one should watch it anymore." It's like, well, I think people should still watch it, and you judge it from its time, and we've discussed that before. But it really is like every tenth joke about Chandler is. I thought you were gay when I met you. <laughs> Yeah. Monaco's big fat dickhead. But what is it on the Berlin Wall? They put if, if you were raised past you, then you're condemned to repeat it. Right. Well, that was a deep moment, Carl. It's on the Berlin Wall. You're not, you're, I think you're it, not, I think you're not wrong. If you're, you're raised wrong. past and you're condemned to repeat it, that's why they keep the, the bit of the wall up and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't but necessarily the, think that's true, though. You know what I mean? I think if you knock all the pyramids down, I don't see them getting built again. It's a great point. I can't argue with you. <laughs> It's going to be hard. Apart from his convince, stockport. It's going to be hard to convince anyone to take that job. Yeah. I don't think you understand minute. what I'm saying, do you? I think it's more of a metaphor. Yeah. But you've got to put it into realism or the metaphor is fucking useless, isn't it? The fat jokes in Friends are absolutely <laughs> brutal, to be fair. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think we are the most fat-friendly pair of comedians on the circuit because mm -hmm. a joke's a joke and it's, you know, but I, I can see why if that's your issue, you're like... You dressed a tiny, skinny 25-year-old Courtney Cox in a fat suit to be like, <laughs> look how fat she was. <laughs> but she, she lost the weight, so it's fine. No one would fuck her. <laughs> By the way, Matthew, have you watched the reunion yet, Dan? I've seen the pictures. Like, jo Matthew Perry is not. Well, apparently he had dental surgery. The day before the reunion, and that's why he's talking about mama. Yeah, did he have that? Doesn't surgery? that doesn't sound like an agent talking shit <laughs> at all? As if you were like, right, well, we haven't done friends in seventeen years. There's a massive reunion. What are you getting paid, Matthew? One point six million dollars. Oh, but fuck me, you've got that dental thing before. <laughs> yeah. I know because of COVID, it's a fucking nightmare. You can't repeat. But like, you're a multi-millionaire. The guy's worth eighty million dollars, but you're like, dentists are a nightmare for cancellations. They charge you $40 if you cancel so obviously we'll have to do it <laughs> the only two normal ones are the two who haven't any work done uh, Phoebe and Joey they look Phoebe's the most, had a bit of the old boot off a little bit but she yeah. looks normal whereas yeah. the others look like Jennifer masks. Aniston she looks like Jennifer look, Aniston looks pretty fine though doesn't no, she, she? Looks, no, she, no she, she doesn't she she looks good but the, like she looks like and I don't want to do all this whole but she looks like she said work done What a, I'm not doing that but like she doesn't look normal. normal. Neither does Ross. Whereas Joey looks like they finished Friends and he went, I'm going to do my own one. But by the way, watching the Friends reunion and, and having them it. not once reference that the TV show Joey ever existed. Like, at no point did James Corden even, uh, who was hosting it, like, turn to him and go, what are you fucking thinking? Matt LeBlanc, like, he didn't even do that. Well, the, there was a slight reference. They went, they're all main characters. They could all be the main character of their own show. Yeah. I was like, yeah. say it now, and he didn't. Yeah. They've erased history, so yeah. you never know. Again. Yeah. That's how bad Joey was. They yeah. were like, well, what if we though. repeat it? Fuck, it doesn't matter. Just erase <laughs> it, delete that shit. I watched Joey. Yeah, it wasn't good. No, but it was Joey's. You have to watch it. Yeah. Jennifer yeah. Aniston, I just watched Horrible Bosses because Sky threw it up. She looks great. Sneaky. Man. Horrible Bosses is such a funny film. Yeah. It's really good. And uh, Jennifer Aniston in that, I know it's like 10 years old now, but... Christ almighty, she looks amazing. Yeah. I was never that bothered by Jennifer Aniston. She is, she's like improved with age compared that, to Matthew got, Perry but, and like But Matt now LeBlanc. she's gone, she's hitting the... Right, okay. But Matt LeBlanc looks like he finished Friends, had a go at Joey and it didn't work. Right. And then his agent went, right, well, you know, you got these film options and he's gone, look, I've just been on a million dollars an episode. I can't be asked anymore. I want to go and sit in Frankie and Benny's for 20 years. And just keep eating pasta. I'll have something beers. He does talk here, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, but he doesn't look like he gives a shit about it. He Has looks he... more like he's into IPAs than he is. Has he done anything gear? else? He's done any other? No, he's not done loads. I can't think has he? of anything he's been. I can't think of anything. That's what I mean. I think he's just had twenty years basically off. Yeah, with his and money. and he's done exactly what I would do with twenty years off and two hundred million in the bank. But that's why I think it's more startling. The eight the, because. Uh, David Schwimmer's just done a set of adverts, hasn't he? And I yeah. haven't seen David Schwimmer in virtually anything. I've seen him pop up a couple of times. A couple of times, but nothing I've watched. Entourage. And then he's doing those adverts. Yeah. He's he's still dyeing his hair so that it's jet black. And you're like, 
holy fuck, 20 years have gone by and you look older. Like, whereas with Jennifer Aniston, maybe like, I don't know, she just feel like they've popped up more. Lisa Kudrow's been in loads of stuff. Yeah. So I've sort of seen her get old. And then all of a sudden, like David Schwimmer's on, and I've like, oh, fuck, what happened? You look hungover as fuck. And Matthew There's Perry looks like he's a baghead. Young. You just see young to old. Just yeah. Just see. Matthew Perry looks uh, ill. Matthew Perry looks like your granddad's mate. And I mean, your granddad's mate, like 80 odd years of age, fucked. Yeah. Like, he looked really, really, really old. Looks frail. How did he act? Were they all on good form? Or? No, no. He's, he's, he, if you watch it, <laughs> he's like, genuinely, he's <laughs> leant over and he's frail. Yeah. He looked fucked. What did the dentist do to you, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> And the camera doesn't, be, the camera barely cuts to him if he's talking. It's a very wide shot. Yeah. It's very like, let's not look at Matthew Perry's face. Yeah. Can't wait for the have a word reunion in 17 years. <laughs> where all three of them. <laughs> Finn's looking beautiful. He's had work done. He's now called Susan. Amazing. The, the have a word reunion is rough. <laughs> well, yeah, Do you remember you... when we used to talk about bumming dads? <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't watched it yet, go and watch it because it was really happy, sad, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was it was good. I think it could have been done slightly better, but it was good. Yeah, it was happy. It was happy, but also like got you in the feels. Yeah. 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 When's the two pints of lager, a packet of crisps, and a packet of crisps reunion? Is that? They do a podcast every they week. They do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apparently, uh, from two pints, there's one of them from the main cast who just doesn't keep in touch. Like, she's just like, fucking hate her. Oh, really? Louise? I don't know. It's not Sheridan Smith, because she still talks to Ralph on Twitter all the time. I've seen that. Um, and Sheridan Smith comes across as really sound, doesn't she? I wonder if it's Donna. Maybe. Can't be easy to work with people over a pr- prolonged period of time and not get fucked off with each other. Like, to have all... T- with, has there any been, ever been any beef with say? the friends? What are you trying to say? With the... Fr- yeah. Well, no, we're yeah. fine. No, they said, they said at the start, they were like, we're all best mates. And you can tell... When they see each other, they're like genuinely like overwhelmed to see each other, like hugging and kissing, like oh, I love you. All of the friends cast, all of them together. Well, yeah, if they pre- say at one point, like if they would ever, if they ever got to a party, even if they were with, let's like like Matthew Perry went with like a friend of his to a party. If any of the other cast were there, they just spent the rest of the night together talking, and they they have to just say to the people we were with, look. I know we're here together, but you're not going to see me for the rest of the night because I'm going to talk to David Schwimmer. Well, they got accused, didn't they, by the uh, the guest actors of being very cliquey. Like, they weren't very inclusive. They're friendly enough, but it was very clear that, like, what, though, you, are, you are not one of these six. So when, like, Paul Rudd had a major role on it, didn't he? Like, there was, a, there was those rumours of, like, yeah, you're not part of this team. And you're like, yeah, because you're not. Because if we have a guest in, we're super friendly to the guest. But they're not part of the have a word team. There is no. a fucking difference. I don't think that... they don't get to shout at Finn. No. Oh, they, they can't talk to Finn. Mate, if anyone punch the head in. If anyone sat on that car, I don't give a fuck who it is. We've got some big guests lined up, dared to talk to Finn. How me and Adam talk to Finn. <laughs> be fucking appalled. Where are you? Little fucking. <laughs> He's being very quiet. Too. Good. He's being good. He's really Do you know I heard th- this was like. After like series two of Friends, you know, it had proper kicked off and it was like the biggest show in the world already with still eight seasons to go. Like all the actors, the, the main actors in it, their agents were like, you're going to be the breakout star, so we're going to get you. And this, I've seen this years ago on an old Friends documentary on the TV channel E. Yeah. Um, there was a Friends thing on that, which was great. It was actually better than the reunion. Mm, like if, you, if you've not seen that one, then watch that first because it's actually better. And apparently all the friends, like the, the main six actors, got together in a room with no agents and went, look, my agent's saying this, and I know yours will be, so we need to make a contracted pact now that none of us ever get paid more than any of the other. So if, if one of us gets offered a million dollars an episode, you've got to give us all that. Like, we can't be, like, being auctioned off against each other because it's just going to cause murder down the line. And they stuck to it all the way to the end. And by... For series nine and ten, they all got a million dollars per episode each as a basic salary. Yeah. So if you ever need to know why that's worked out as a as like colleagues and friends, mm-hmm. that's part of it. Like me and Adam get paid 
exactly the same on this. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't half keep, I don't know, it's little things like that. You could have, you could have like demanded more, couldn't you? Well, you, had a, you had a bigger following when we started. We are free to get our own sponsorships. And this week's episode is brought to you by Pepsi Max Cherry. Mine's, uh, mine's, mine's tan Diet Coke. Tango on mine this week. Mine's Diet Coke. Pepsi Max Cherry. Tango. For, for when you want a Pepsi Diet Max Coke. to taste Tango. a bit it's more better. like cherry. Uh, it's I want money, Tango. Diet Coke. Pepsi Max Cherry. Evian. For when Pepsi Max isn't no. cherry shh, enough. Shh. Evian. If you have Diet Coke, you'll fuck a really hot man that's doing the windows at 11 a.m. Patron. You'll get bummed. Your dad, give it your dad. Patron, you'll get bummed. give me Co money. Cocaine. For, for, for when you're tired and you're drunk, but you don't want to be either anymore, but you don't want to go home. Jeff Norcott, if you really want to <laughs> piss off all the socialist listeners of your podcast, <laughs> he's got a, a book out and they can get really noncy and whinge about it on Ninja Patreon. Stars. I'm sponsored by Ninja Stars this week. Buy your Ninja Stars at NinjaStars.com. Uh, uh, merch. D Draymond Weatherby merch. <laughs> I'm sponsored by Draymond Weatherby merch. This podcast is brought to you by Have a Word, the podcast. Yeah, pay us, have a word. Yeah. No, they're paying me. No, no. Oh, um, they're sponsoring me. So this month, out of the Patreon money, two grand, you got to pay me because the podcast is sponsoring me. And I made the executive decision. You weren't in the meeting. It was just me and a representative of the podcast, which was me. Have a Word, the podcast brings to you Have a Word, the podcast. Yeah, I retract everything yeah, I, I said we before. We vetoed that one. Yeah. I've eaten that I one. actually own all the podcasts because we remember the lock-in when we made a bet. <laughs> Wet wipes. Um, let's have a break. <laughs> Money cunt. Wigs. Shoes. Wigs. One shoe. Wig wigs. For, for when you're bald and you think, no, I'd rather not be. What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to supremecbd.uk, one of the official sponsors of the Have A Word podcast, and get yourself some premium CBD oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself. This stuff has got a million uses. It can help with anxiety. It can help you sleep. It can help with aches and pains. It's really, really brilliant. It's been helping me and a lot of other people. Now, if you go to supremecbd.uk and use the special promo code, code WORD, that's W-O-R-D, you get 30% off every and you order, and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way. That's how sponsorship works. They sponsor the podcast. We push you their way. It's a money game, baby, but you're going to get money off your CBD. And what's better than money off? Nothing. Go get it. Supreme CBD dot UK. Uh, Feeling a bit fluey. It's because, it's because last night, I'm not- oh, arm's not in charge, is it? I, no, it's not. I sound, I sound like a pussy hole. Yeah. But I could have done without a, a late show last night. And when, you, when you're doing hot water and they're like, it's two shows on a Wednesday. By the way, I fucking love that club, but I particularly love it when there's a midweek crowd. I, what I meant to say before was like, at midnight, it had overrun by half an hour. You know when you get to the end of your 15, 20 minute set and you're headlining, and a lot of the time you'd be like, that's too late, Masai had overrun, Everyone had just let it wiggle out a bit. And yeah. I understand, I wasn't even eggy. But the crowd got to the end. And you get a sense as a comic when the crowd's got more in them. Yeah. But it was five past 12 on a Wednesday. I was like, you bunch of fucking animals. You legends. They were, they were like, we could have a bit more. We're all right. Any, like the, the magic of hot water. Also, Liverpool, you can only do it in the big cities. Liverpool, if hot water was from Glasgow, Manchester, they could have probably made it work. But just to get to the end of a set and have a crowd be like, yeah, you've got to do another bit if you want. <laughs> I was like, why are you all on furlough still? Who's got jobs? I was like, I'm not asked. Don't worry about well, it. People just want to be out, don't they? But like Manchester was chocolate last night. That blues bar was packed. We we had to book oh, yeah. for food and then get there and go, we don't want any food. We rang up and went, can we, out, can we come to the bar? They loved you. <laughs> They were made up. All right. So we rang up and went, can we book for tonight? And they went, uh, well, we're not taking any walk-ins for the bar tonight, so unless you've got a food reservation, I'm afraid you won't be coming in. Ah, yeah. And we went, well, can we just book for food then? And they went, what time would you like to come? Like, what time we got available? She went, only 11 p.m. And we went, yeah, we'll come for food. Uh, 11, 11 p.m. PM. Straight after our meal appointment. Yeah, our, yeah. Our meal. And then we walked in and she went, meal appointment? Meal appointment, what do I mean? Reservation. We have a meal appointment. Reservation. I mean, it literally means the same thing, but it made me look a bell end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for my meal appointment. Um, I'd we, like to masticate on schedule. We walked in and they went, just for drinks? And we went, 
Yeah. And she went, yeah, no problem. Come over there. Yeah. See, I get, listen, I get that everywhere's busy and there's bookings. We're planning ahead. I'm going out for drinks with the boys next Friday in Chester. It's already booked up. It was booked up last week because I was like, oh, I've got to make sure. But it's still pretty fucking amazing to have a nearly sold out hot water at midnight on a Wednesday. I just like, I fucking love it. So thanks for supporting comedy. It's fucking great. However, shouting at midnight after, I, I just don't think those mics are on loud enough. So I naturally just go, I'm going to make up for this, which is probably a failing on my part. But I, I, I was on I a hot water last week and just turned to the sound guy, Joe, and we sat him and, can I have more volume? Nice one. Because <laughs> Binti's not there. Yeah. My voice was so deep this morning. My son is eight weeks old. He's not smiled yet. Is he he's talking yet? He's only just, yeah, he's got, he's got a job. Uh, <laughs> and I went, are you ready for your bottle? And it was so much deeper. There was almost a look like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, why is Barry White feeding me my morning bottle? Imagine um, baby. if Barry White was in your house for no reason. In Ima- imagine. <laughs> imagine. Imagine. He's done that thing. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Shit grenade! <laughs> Would you ever breastfeed, Jack? Me? Yeah. If you, if you, did. it's frowned upon a little bit by you, Laura. You shouldn't know. They'd be like, I couldn't find the dummy, and it's warm, and I'm topless. He's no, but you can get those he? things, can't exactly. you? No, I mean, out of his actual man's head. No, but he doesn't produce milk. But you can get those like things that you strap on. Yeah. You put your wife's tit milk in your fake tits and get your son to suck on your fake right. tits. Well, we're past Laura's boob milk anyway. We're just on bottles. She's retired the working titties. So she's we're yeah, just doing can, bottles. That's, that makes it even easier. You don't yeah, even have yeah, to squeeze yeah, yeah, it out yeah. of there. You just get it out the fridge, put it in your tit. Yeah, Jack. Hey, <laughs> I sometimes can't even be out. I'm just like, if I've got a bottle and then he's ready to eat, like usually you're going to have like a, a muslin or a cloth. A what? And I literally <laughs> knew you were going to do it. A muslin. Fake boobs. A mus- Do you know what a muslin is? Yeah. 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 It's a cloth, isn't it? And you put a thing on a dog because it bites everyone. <laughs> it's just a fucking... It's l- retarded. <laughs> Conversations with Adam. <laughs> do you want a bottle, baby? Well, would you Ooh, not yeah. ever use one of them? No, mate. I'm lazy. Sometimes I wipe... I've li- he, he does a little bit of spit up and I'm like, I use my t-shirt to clean it. I'm a lazy man. I'm not strapping myself up with fake tits. But what if what if he asked for them? What if he was like... <laughs> what do you mean? What if he was like, he's eight <laughs> weeks old. He's not even smiled. What do you think? I've got some weird autistic kid who doesn't smile. But he's like, Dad, can you get your fake tits out? <laughs> what if... It's utter nonsense. What if... Uh, <laughs> What if? <laughs> what if he was like? What if? Here we go, Mr. Milker. It's called. <laughs> what if? What if he went, Dad? Can I bum your dad? Do you know what I mean? Like, what if? What would you do? It's what would you do if your son it's can't only speak? Fifty-five quid, <laughs> Mr. Milker. But what if he was like four? Like and he's like, Daddy, Daddy, I want Daddy Titty. Yeah, we'd have a fucking stern word outside. <laughs> Bitty, like, come here. I'm already raising him harder. I'm roughing him up a little bit. I can feel it. I was so delicate with that. I'm like, I'll shut up. He'll be so fine. You, so you wouldn't, even if that's what your kid wanted. Yeah. If it for he went, daddy, daddy, can I have some man meat? <laughs> yeah. I, Look how happy he looks. Are you going to slide the picture of that squ- absolute quendo <laughs> breastfeeding his son but from look, fake tits? He looks happy because he's connecting with his child. No, he doesn't. He looks like an absolute tit end. And that kid... If, if that if that what that kid needs needs to grow the fuck up, I know he's a baby. Should right. I call this? I think that looks really good. Man tits. I think I could I I could get me my head around that. No, you couldn't. I could. No, you couldn't. If you I wouldn't be asked. You wouldn't be asked. If my missus was like, look, I want you to bomb with the baby as well as me. Here's a pair of fake tits. Got them on Amazon. Fifty four pound twenty three. Apparently. Look. Oh, that's just his actual tits, isn't it? Yeah. Right. I'll do whatever it takes to bond with my child. Yeah, I don't think that's bonding. That's abuse. Why is it abuse? No, I know it's not abuse. Yeah. But it's fucking horrible. Why? Oh, sorry. Well, having your child suck on your nipple. Yeah. Yeah. Not me nipple. I mean little fake robot nipple. Oh, right. I thought it could be. fake robot milky nipple. By the way, Carl just pulled up a picture of an, a man with his actual boober. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> I just said, if Jack went, hey, gives a tit, would you give him yours? Yeah. It's a legitimate question. Can't wait till these have kids. Can't wait. <laughs> What's, we'll do it's it. It's going to be such an annoying cunt. How are you fake tits, Adam? 
I can't wait until me and Carl both have kids and we get to see how easy it is. It's probably going to be the end of next year for you, so that's not too far to wait, is it? <laughs> John Bennett says, Euros are about to start. I know that Scousers feel more Scouse than English, but have you ever been to see England away or been to the Euros? And will you be into this tournament? <laughs> and has your dad been bummed? He's added that on the question. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Uh, has he been bummed at the Euros? I would rather watch my dad get bummed than go to an England away match. <laughs> I haven't got a drum. I couldn't think of people I'd least rather be around than away England fans. Mm. Yeah, that's where your half Spanish vibe comes out, isn't it? Fuck. Like I just, I'd... Yeah. It's uh, it's the Scouse thing. But like, it, it's just so detached from my life. No. No, yeah. it is. No, it no, no, sorry. I, yeah. I, I, I was... I wasn't disagreeing with it. Fuck no, it's not. Life. It's attached to your life. <laughs> like, <laughs> last night at the England match, the, the players taking the knee was booed. Like, if that happened at Anfield, people would be literally thrown out by the fans, not the stewards. Like, Trent what Alexander is that? getting about? injured was cheered. What? It, 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 like this, like, I don't like... I, I, I do feel more scouts than English, but I don't like creating this divide. I travel all over the country and I love... Like, uh, do you know what I mean? Does you that... are English. Yeah. Yeah. But no. Yeah. The 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 <laughs> the footy thing is just it. If England win the Euros, they'll parade it round London. Yeah, it's the capital, isn't it? Yeah. But they're not going to come to Liverpool to it, do a parade. But that's my point. It's not about me. It's not about us. I just like I'll watch it. That's so. That's, so, that's such a needy way of looking at it. <laughs> if England win the World Cup, they should come to every town and village they should. on one of the biggest bus parades ever. They should. It takes four and a half months. They should. They absolutely should. Right. They should go to at least every major city. Right. Well, they might do, but you know, it's a, they won't. They'll do it in London. We're not going to win it, so it doesn't matter. Right. Like, I'll watch it, and I will want England to win. I will. And as soon as they don't, I won't care. <laughs> no, it's because you, a lot of the smaller, t if you're a, from a smaller town and your club doesn't play in Europe or the top leagues, when you see the flags from around the place, it is like, they, they, they like put their club names on it. It's a lot of the smaller clubs. Because if you're a Man United fan or a Tottenham fan or a Chelsea fan, you've got that high-end reward haven't you you've got european matches you've got finals fa cup all of that stuff but if you're from fucking mansfield you yeah. probably would get into england because that's your chance maybe yeah but so will you i have to say like the, i would watch the england team i am english i'm proud of being english but i would hate to be in like a european city and as we got to a cafe all the cafe owners or bar owners are like oh fuck england fans are coming and then they see you walk in and go, oh, just more knobheads. Yeah. I, I would feel ashamed of that. Yeah. That's the, the most embarrassing thing about being an England fan for all the time I've been into football is when it kicks off. And you're like, oh, God. And it always it kicks off. And you, you see videos of the Irish fans. And they're just having a great time. Did you see when they accidentally, like, someone jumped up on a car and dented it? And then all the Irish fans were like, Wee. they were trying to fix the dent in the car. And then they finally fixed it. And they all started fucking going mental around the car. And they're like, that's the Irish fans doing major, like minor fucking motor repairs <laughs> and having a great time. And then the England fans are having like a fucking race war with Russians. Also, why the fuck would you like want to deal with Russian ultras? You wouldn't. They're the most jacked up steroid based fucking. Yeah, it's just, it, it's just not, it, it's just not like the same thing for me. Like I, I'm in a bad mood for days when Liverpool lose a big game. England, I will genuinely sit there and want them to win. And the second they go out, I'll be like, well, that's that over. Sound. And then it's... I'll still enjoy the rest of the tournament. I like tournament football. I don't yeah. like the international breaks throughout the season. I love watching tournament football in the yeah, summer. Yeah, when there's like four games on in one good day, that's. Just the best. It'd be great. I'm really looking forward to it, but I just don't care to the same level I do about. No, no, but that's yeah, that's. But it's more of like you are still in England, and like it, I feel like sometimes with this, <laughs> that you being a Liverpool fan is obviously the most important thing. But like, take that away. It's so sad that we're all English. You're, you're into football, but you're like, yeah, it'd be a bit. I'd feel a bit embarrassed to be in the England away section and like. You know, like at the at the the last Euros, like we're voting leave, 
we're voting leave. You're like, ah, uh, just why does it draw out that oh, bell? And why are they booing? It's tribalism, isn't it? Why are they booing That's the Black is. Lives Matter knee? Like, how how have you got to that point? You might not disagree with it, but you must know that if you boo, you look fucking racist. Do you know how I watch England? I watch England in the exact same way that I watched Leicester win the league in 2016. It was like, <laughs> be good if they won it. Yeah. And oh, then they'll win it. it. That's, and good. that's good, isn't it? Well, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's good that they won it. I would prefer them to win it over Arsenal or Chelsea. All right, so, so, good. so Budweiser getting touch or coca-cola you know or uh pepsi max cherry because they're one of your personal yeah. sponsors he's doing all right row your bags mate and they were like they're like look we've got four tickets carl adam dan and maybe finn no um or a spare seat and then you know you're gonna be a spare you've got somewhere for the bags in it yeah. nice for the row your bags uh, and they're like so you can go and watch your game at the euros would you actually pick a game that England aren't playing with. Like, because I'd love to go abroad to watch football at a Euros. I'd go and watch a France or a Germany game. Would you actually pick a, Probably a England Germany. aren't in this game? Yeah, 100%. That's so sad, isn't it? I'd go and watch a Germany game. I wonder how many people are listening to this, game. like, slightly annoyed, going, but you're English, you should put, support England. Scousers all understand, and if you're not, then you don't have to. Yeah. There's just a detachment from... It. it it's not a hatred... It's not a dislike. It's just a detachment. Really? But it, I feel the same, and I'm nothing to do with being a scouser. Yeah. I feel the detachment. Yeah. Because only, only so many times you can watch uh, tournament football go fucking horribly wrong because of that. And I know it's not happened in the last few, has it? It's been a wee while. It's been sort of like, has it been 12, 16 years since it's booted off? Probably. But it's fucking embarrassing. It makes you feel detached from it. I would. Yeah. I'd, I'd it, love to go and watch France. I just, I just don't like. I, I like. I say it's not that I'm like. I hope England. Li There's a lot of scouts who were like that. They were like, I want England out in the group stage. Fuck it, not asked. And I'm not like that. I'm just. I just don't. It do, it doesn't make. You a know difference. why we'd like England to do well? Why? Just to make the atmosphere of going out better. So yeah. will you be watching That's the tournament? So John says, will you will you be following it this tournament? I'll watch every I'll game watch that England I've got games. the opportunity to watch. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't give a fuck if they lose. Yeah, but you'll be watching it like almost like you're Welsh or something. I'll be watching it like I watch the NFL. Yeah. That's me team, the LA Rams. Sort of. Got not asked. Got no attachment to them. Yeah, Picked yeah. them because you know. Ah. And then you're on particularly slappy form today, Adam. So fucking annoying. Um, <laughs> the Rams. <laughs> I'm gonna do more now. It's dead annoying. I think you're on a little bit of a man period today, aren't you? No, I'm not. I'm not. But uh, it's just like we're, we're recording Come a on. podcast and I was like, he's in a mood. i got to make my fucking uh, point. I wouldn't go there, Don. You not reckon? I wouldn't go I there. I think Dan's in a mood. I wouldn't go there. I think he looks like he's in a mood. I'm sure. I'm, Feels like he's in a mood. I'm, a, I'm genuinely not. I I'm know you're not, but I'm telling him not to go there. Tell, tell me what? what's wrong. What do you mean? What do you mean? You just seem really moody. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You are. <laughs> no, you're doing it like, I'm, oh, I'm, sorry. No, I'm wrong. I must be wrong. Sorry. I must be wrong. I don't that rage radiating off, yeah. <laughs> I, I must I must be you're wrong. You're feeling, this is my rage. Do you yeah. think this is my rage? Yeah. I've never seen you this angry. <laughs> I'm, I'm fuming. <laughs> uh, stage at three minutes past midnight, shouting. I can't What's imagine on? you getting angry, Dan. I you think are? you're such a nice, placid man. I used to get fucking fuming when I was younger. <laughs> Which Jesus what? Christ. I just can't imagine it. I had a real, like, nasty temper on me. Did you? And then I was in a few relationships. I was in that relationship with that girl sort of 12, 13 years ago that, like, I definitely loved her. But we were, like, we lost our temper in ways that were, like, unhealthy. And I think after that, in the aftermath of that relationship, I was like, I never want to get that fucking angry with someone that I'm meant to care about. Fucking horrible and, like, jealous and... Like a rage about it. I don't know if that's just part of growing up or if I was just had PTSD from a nasty fucking relationship. I haven't got time to get angry. I just rather just go away from it. You haven't got time. Like it, if something's making me angry, hmm. I just don't bother with it. You're too busy. Yeah. If someone's doing me head in, I just go away from them. Yeah. It's that easy. But that's I, the, got, I can't be asked. But that's the problem angry. with a relationship, isn't it? Like when, like I've seen people on nights out get into like a discussion with someone and be like, "Oh, I'm fucking." They think this, and you're like, "Who cares? You don't know them. Just be like, they're a bell end. I don't know them, and just wonder." It's more difficult, like 
in a relationship, in it, when you can't get away, or like families, fuck me. When families boot off, you can't be like, I'll just fuck you, I don't know you. Like, oh, I've got to spend every Christmas with you. Yeah. I quite like getting angry every now and then. I think it's fun. I do it in the be- I do it on the football pitch or yeah, yeah. I don't do it at all. But don't you just do it with FIFA? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's yeah. a good outlet. It gets it out. It's a good outlet. Yeah. Yeah, it is it is healthy. Mm. I get irritated. Yeah. But I then just, it's... I just go to sleep. You, really, I can't sleep when I'm angry. Go, I'm really good at napping. Yeah. yeah. No, that's real. Fuming. Real right. anger. Yeah, but when are you ever fuming at home? What? What could you be fuming at home? Well, if you've had an argument with your missus. Yeah. Yeah. That is hard to go to sleep. Or like if someone's you... petrol bombed my car. Yeah. Or, or someone's bummed your dad. That yeah. is like. <laughs> someone's bummed me dad while right. the petrol bomb on me car. I am fuming. Mick, Why? stop playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake. You're not good at darts. Pink slips. <laughs> You're not good at darts. <laughs> I reckon he goes and loses on purpose. <laughs> oh, I've lost again. <laughs> Throwing oh, darts on the floor. <laughs> missed the board again. <laughs> <laughs> What's he pulling up and skates on? He's <laughs> <laughs> got a hatch. A hat. A hatch. Oh. Feet hatch pants. Pants. <laughs> hatch pants. It's like a cat flap. <laughs> yeah, it's got hatch pants. How big are these darts players that he's fucking around with? <laughs> An ass flap. No, it's just, it's just a bum all size flap. I'd only play darts <laughs> with small men. They don't exist. Graham wants a game. <laughs> <laughs> what about Deshaun? Nah, mate. Um, I can guarantee not one member, not one person ever called Deshaun <laughs> has played darts. Dart. <laughs> that's, that's something I've never thought about. Actually, where are the black darts players? It's a good point. It's a very good point. It's a good point. Can you please Google black dart players? I am. It sounds like well, an unbelievable I mean, sitcom you... from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> the black dart players. Black dart players' wives. Oh, yeah, oh. the lady. She's famous. She's like one of the best, isn't she? Is she, yeah? Phil Taylor. Um, What's she called? Uh, Detta. Dita Hedman. Dita Hedman. Yeah, Dita Hedman. Peterson. But aside from that, no, there's there's not many. Uh, there's two black darts players. Mm. Two. One man, one woman. I wonder why. What do you reckon the social politics there are? I, I'm not sure. Maybe black people just don't <laughs> like darts. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe white people fucking love it. Don't, don't let them have a go. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe the white people that play darts don't like black people. <laughs> I think we've got there. I think we were safe right. on that one, Daniel. Yeah, and got... you bullseyed it. Did I bullseye it? Yeah. All oh, right, yeah, nice one. Maybe that's because. It's because I'm in a mood. <laughs> it's because I'm fuming. <laughs> I'm fuming with the racial injustice at UK darts clubs. That's why I'm angry at him. That's what I came here to talk Maybe about. Maybe it's because black people are better at a lot more sports than white people. So, like, all the good black darts players are actually just really good at footy as well. And they're like, I could Pick be a darts one. player or a footballer. I'll be a footballer. Yeah, that is like a, Killian that, Mbappe mm. could be the new <laughs> Phil Taylor. It's a famous choice that a lot of sportsmen get to. They get to 18 and they're like, ah, am I going to be a big fat cunt and play darts? I'm going to be one of the best paid athletes in the world. It's a massive, it's a big thing. A lot of uh, Premier League academies <laughs> lose Mbappe. players to darts. Is Killian Mbappe good at darts? Let's have a look. <laughs> no. No, no. But yeah, but maybe it's been erased from history. So we can't do it again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, famously, because Stephen Gerrard went to our school, Cardellini, don't really remember. Um, Everyone did, though, really, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he was really good at tennis, and apparently he could have been a, a really good tennis player as well. So maybe there's loads of black sports people. Maybe like Dak Prescott, the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Great pull. <laughs> I didn't expect that one. May- maybe he's really good. Because if you think about it, being a quarterback... It's just like being a darts player, but with a different thing. You've yeah. got to throw it, and you're trying to hit a fucking bullseye. Mm. But instead of a bullseye, catch. What about yeah. javelin? But Dak Prescott just got paid $160 million for a, for four years. Exactly. So I think that's maybe why he went down the old oh, no. NFL If you were, if you're in the PDC on Sky One uh, over Christmas, I think it's $200 million. No, but yeah. that, this is what I'm saying. That This is why there's no black darts players, because they're all tempted by the money elsewhere. Oh, yeah. Whereas if they were really in it for the love of the game, You'd see, you'd see so many. Odell Beckham Jr. 
be a fucking pulling lakeside. Me. Da, da, pulling da, da, me. Da, 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 da. Yeah. All of those NBA players, you know those six foot eight yeah. Americans. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be easy because you're dead close to the board. Aren't you? <laughs> LeBron <laughs> pushing it. LeBron. <laughs> LeBron could have been so good at darts. I just put that over fucking there. <laughs> Stop reaching. Stop reaching, LeBron. And you are allowed to reach Literally. over the line, aren't you? Your yeah, yeah. feet have to be behind the line. Yeah. So if you've got long arms... It'd just be pinning the yeah. tail on the donkey. <laughs> Wasn't how easy that had to Fuck be. Fucking... <laughs> 60. 60. Another 180, motherfucker. And that's yeah. the voice of a black man. Yeah. That's LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah. yeah. Phoebe Ma- Cohen. Imagine... Phoebe. imagine. No, no, no. Oh, I'm, not Sorry. <laughs> I'm, not, Try, I'm not done. Sorry. Imagine move, LeBron man. James, you know, when he was like... Oh, where am I going to sign for? And in the end, he was like, I'm going to Long Beach. Imagine if he was like, I'm going to Lakeside. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably good at that. Thanks for stopping me. I <laughs> <laughs> was like, Dad, you can't move on. I've got this Long Beach Lakeside bit that is going to absolutely play. I know what we'll get on the clip. <laughs> He's got, he got watery eyes. I love it. One of my favourite bits is where Adam gets watery eyes. You know we're having fun when Adam's like leaking. Oh, I just, I think we need to make darts more accessible so that you can do darts on the side as well as another sport. Because I think we're depriving the darts world of some superstars just because they're busy, you know, Making playing footy. way much more money doing something else. Exactly. Maybe we need to put more money into darts. Maybe that's the answer. Who does? <laughs> the world Us? we can do it have a word darts the world we need the government need to fund darts I mean the NHS is fine stop whinging about the NHS <laughs> waiting lists there's no black people playing darts <laughs> come on Bojo get okay, your priorities right uh, we're, uh, we've announced a massive three billion <laughs> package for darts that's for one year. Yeah. <laughs> the PBC World Championship, you get three billion quid. <laughs> then you'll see black people playing darts. Yeah. You'll see fucking everyone playing darts then. Arlington. Yeah. yeah. Steve and Gerald played tennis. Mm. That'd been fucking random. And apparently John it's... Welsh was really good at badminton. Right. Mm. Well, I don't think he knows who John Welsh is. John Welsh, was he, a, does he he didn't quite make it at the top level. No, he, he's a Tramia now, I think. Is he a centre back? I think he plays in Australia now. Oh, does he? I know he, I know he played in the lower leagues for a while and he's at Liverpool and he's a youth. His brother was It'd be Arlington. good to have a yeah. northern yeah. working class tennis player rather than a like a Tim Henmany or like Andy Murray's obviously Scottish. Greg Rosetsky, the Australian Englishman. Canadian. Was he Canadian? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, Canadian. I reckon I like could be all a short of our tennis top top athlete. Short the top. tennis was funded. Yeah. Which is the next one after darts, I think. Then I could have, you know, could have gone quite right high in that. What? Short tennis. Short wooden tennis. B- wooden bats. Yeah. Yeah. I got, yeah. I I got mean, to the semi. You could have been today. quite. You could have been one of the best at that. Yeah. Well, I was one of the best at it. Yeah. There's about 52 people who've ever played it in, like, <laughs> alive. I what could have been top ten. Well, I was in the top four of those 52. What yeah. other sports? What other sports should we uh, fund? Should be funded. Yeah. Underfunded sports. I think the American sports are quite underfunded over here, aren't they? It'd be great. <laughs> yeah. The Major League Baseball, the, the UK government don't put any money into it. <laughs> Mental, isn't it? It's fucking really short-sighted. You're absolutely right. No, but what I'm saying is it must be good because their stadiums <laughs> are full. So the market's there. We're just not tapping into it. The economy could be stimulated if you had the fucking... What? The Swansea batting practices over there. <laughs> the Swansea batting practices. NASCAR. NASCAR. On the M6. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think would be really good. Don't get If you invented a, a car racing, but everyone just got like a 2017 Ford Fiesta. Like you just have to go to People's Ford in Bootle. You get between 10 and 15 grand for a car. And then that's what you're racing. Yeah, it's like the star in a reasonably priced, priced car on Top Gear was one of the best bits. Oh, yeah. Watching like Lewis Hamilton and like film stars twat around the most boring, like, what was it, a Kia 
piece of shit or a... <laughs> <laughs> What was I think it? It was the 2015 <laughs> was it, Kia piece of shit. Was it the 2015 or was it the day you? Was it Dacia Sandero? Bag of one? cack. <laughs> it was a. Um, it was a. Was it the Hyundai? Meh. It was a Hyundai. <laughs> and it was a Hyundai. Was it, it was a hi- Hyundai. I can't think of a thing. I'm gonna top gear. It was a Hyundai oh. Jizz rag. I'm sure it was a Hyundai. Dodgeball, mm. I think, is underfunded. <laughs> yeah. It was quite big after the film come out, wasn't it? I used to play it in the street for a bit. Yeah, the professional leagues aren't up to much, are they? Mm. Yeah, it was high on, though. Yeah. Fencing. Yeah. Fencing. Are you just thinking of shit sports? <laughs> I'm thinking of sports that don't get enough attention because there's not enough money in it. But if there was money, you could put money in anything and make it sound good. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like... We, we love football because we were brought up being told this is the sport to like. The reason Americans don't like it is because they're not brought up like that. They're brought up being told baseball, basketball, NFL. So if we started now, we could get the next generation of British kids into, into fucking anything we wanted. The NBA. Snail racing. Yeah. Oh, anything. Mar- marbles. I don't think there's l- many British kids getting in the NBA, even if they want to. Why? I just don't think we've got some of the natural resources. No, they're all playing darts. <laughs> yeah, those big six foot eight <laughs> kids from Swansea <laughs> playing darts. Yeah, I'm fucking great at this. <laughs> Lou Allen, you're fucking cheating. No, I'm not. I'm massive. <laughs> Lou Allen, Lawrence. What? Lawrence Lou Allen Bowen. Lawrence Just Llewellyn Jim Bowen. I thought <laughs> I thought of a Welsh name, you bell end. He's just, he's just managed to put a, a dart player in there. Uh, <laughs> can't believe me bullseye joke went underappreciated. No, there. no, I got it. Marion says, have you... Lawrence Llewellyn Jim Bowen. Now I'm fuming. <laughs> <laughs> Marion says, have you ever hooked up with groupies after a show? Yeah. Obviously, pre Laura and Sam. Yeah. 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 Carl? Yeah. Never had a show. No, but you. you I've re- ran shows. Oh, but you did it so well. Mm. Like, you see your people, like, they might be like, you know what? He told me the rules and it gave me a little, a little bit of a fanny tremor. Yeah. Tremor? Fan- <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. We did have a. You'd have to be pretty sexy to get laid being a fucking show manager. Like, comics can get laid. I was the fucking general manager, thank you, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Fucking those stripes. Yeah, I was building manager. Yeah. Not just show. Building manager. As in staff. Makes money, you sound like stock, the caretaker. Right. Everything. They're everything. All right. Thanks. But now no one ever tried to get off of me because I'm in a long term relationship. Thanks, Daniel. Mm. No, but that doesn't mean they've not, like, had a little. Giving you the. I know, when I say the rules, I say. I've got to go. Please, no talking. Turn your phones off. Don't try and suck my dick. You had to. I had to. It was too often. Too I've common. tickled plenty of vagina post show. Can I have a can I have a selfie, Adam? Can I have a tickle? We had a have a way. Groupie coming out with us once, didn't we? Nope. What happened there? Nothing. Don't know what he's on about. You don't want us to tell the story. Oh, in August. In August. (laughs) I remember. I remember. I was with my Uncle Colin, who was staying. And my Uncle Colin is like he's from a different fucking world than me. And he comes to visit once a year. And I was like, I've got a gig in Liverpool. And I clocked her on the way. She's like, hiya, Dan. I love you. And, And my uncle is the most sort of controlled, sound... It's like middle class guy ever. And he, he gave me a look like, she's a crazy fucking bitch. <laughs> like, it was quality. I was like, yeah, she mad there. Mm-hmm. She seemed lovely though. No, but like sometimes after a show, you know, you got a bit of a vibe. Uh, and you're like, yeah, oh, whatever. One girl, this was years ago at the Birmingham Glee. And uh, a girl come up to me with her friend afterwards. I went just went to the Birmingham Glee bar to get a drink and her and her friend were stood there. And uh, she was she was like, Made it very clear, very quickly that she was single. And then she said something like, um, (laughs) she said something like, yeah, I was talking to a guy the the other night, but uh, 
it didn't go with me. He didn't try hard enough. And I went, how hard have I got to try to get you to come back with me? I said, you've just done it on stage. And I was like, okay. I didn't even watch the end of the show. God bless comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I got a message from a girl uh, from the Preston Frog who was on a date. I clocked her. She was really attractive. She was on a date and she was smiling and laughing at me. And I never saw her once look at the guy she was on a date with. And I was like, she seems really attract like something about her and uh, i got a message later she was like hi i've just been on a date and we came to see you at the frog and i spent the whole night thinking why am i not on a date with dan nightingale and i was like i love comedy thank you comedy let me reply and we dated each other for uh, six weeks and it didn't work out that sounds lovely that sounds yeah. like it was really good there's also times after the show I just love comedy it makes it so easy like, like you, when you're this, you don't get a lot of women going, sorry, I, I know you're just sat here having drinks, but I'm on a date with a guy and I've been looking over at you, bald man, <laughs> slightly overweight, shit glasses, thinking, why am I not on a date with that guy? <laughs> Give me a microphone on the crowd and I'm stealing your fucking lady. Mr. Steal Yo Girl over here. Um, the, the opposite can once. be quite true after the show though, where like, because of the power balance in mate selection amongst humans, which tends to be, or certainly the, the conception is that all men want to fuck all women. So it's up to women to go, I'll fuck that one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a generalization. It, some yeah. of it holds true, but that's sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not saying it's true, but the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. there's a The general a perception, yeah. So because of that, which I'm not saying it is anyone's fault, I think it's just the way society is and there's many... Uh, reasons that we won't go into for it but a lot of women and used to just being like i'll fuck you and having a mango okay <laughs> so there's been times after the show where i've sort of gone for a drink at the bar or with another comic and we've stayed in the bar it may be like a non-purpose-built comedy club so a purpose-built comedy club you tend, to, tend to stay in the green room don't you yeah, you yeah, amongst yeah. yourselves but maybe if the show's like a jonglers which is in a nightclub and then you go for a drink in the bar afterwards because you don't want to go back to the hotel or whatever. And you're another comic. And a group of girls sort of come over to talk to you, or even a group of mixed, but there's a few single girls. Sometimes a girl has got really upset because she's been, like, too drunk. And I'm just like, this is just not for me at all. And just being really, really, like, angry when I've gone, no. Like, they've gone to kiss me or something, I've gone, oh, no, sorry, no. And they're like, wow, me talking to me all night. It's really, really weird. Yeah, because you've you've taken their status away from them. Yeah, they're, they're like, like, hang on, I'm weighing you up. You should be very appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. That's a great power move if you've got it to be like, nah. <laughs> 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 Fucking. Have you met her? <laughs> fanny, fanny rats at the a, a gig though stand out. What's like I. A funny rat. What the comics who are just like, <laughs> like literally, like a dog trying to scratch their arsehole on a carpet, just thrutching around a bar, waiting for a girl to be like, "Are you the comedian doing a sex?" Jim Jeffries, and I can say this because he's too big to give a fuck now, was the biggest funny rat I have ever seen. When I was coming up in stand-up, when I was brand new, Carl, make a note for this. This will be this week's clip. We'll tag him. He was a headliner. Let's see funny if he retweets rat. this. He was the fucking worst I have ever seen. He like he made it look like he was just doing comedy to try and have sex with girls from an audience afterwards. And it, I, I saw he, he gigged at the Hyena several times when I was up there. He was a bit of a regular. He'd not been in the UK long from Australia. And when it didn't work, like Jim is one of the best comics I've ever worked with. Like yeah. Jim Jeffries is uh, famous now, but for a reason. He stood out when I was brand new. There was comics that I were. I watched Michael McIntyre. I never thought anything of it. Michael yeah. McIntyre, when I was brand new into comedy, he was. He wasn't even headlining. He was doing the sport. I was like, he's all right. It's just a bloke from London doing observations. It wasn't dead strong. Daro Brian didn't look like much special. But then there was these guys that just stood out, and Jim Jeffries was one of them. And he did well with ladies. And he was single. He's 25, 26 at the time. Why not? When he didn't get a bite, it's kind of the saddest thing you'll see <laughs> is a clearly brilliant comedian who is just pestered by like, ah, come on, I want to fucking, do you remember me? And like trying to like, almost like, sometimes there's a comment you get noticed and people are like, excuse me, are you the comment? You weren't even trying to be noticed. He was like literally like, ah, ah. 
<laughs> I can remember me from the fucking stage. And girls would be like, oh, yeah, it was good. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> and then they'd wander off. You're fuck's sake. And I remember him, I was asking him about it. And he was like, oh, yes, yeah, fucking. He was like, never try and pull girls at normal bars. Why would the fuck you do a comedian? It makes you like three scores hotter than you are. Yeah, it does, yeah. Like if you're a, if you're a five in real life, you're a fucking eight in a comedy club. And then he was like, like, you're a six. But if you have a good gig, Dan, you're a fucking nine. And I was young enough that I was like, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> and now I look back and think, that was a grown man going, it's a three point push. <laughs> he was such an absolute funny Have you lad. ever fucking had- Fucking great comic and a decent bloke as well. Have you ever had a line in your set to sort of be like, I'm available? I mean, I'd be lying. I, I talk about my life. So when, I, when I've been in a relationship, I've got jokes about being in a relationship. And when I was single, which I was, it's not that I was writing them to be like, and this is the bit where I'll try and get laid. But I, I don't go on and do one-liners like we were talking about Masai Graham before. or Like those guys have just got jokes and it doesn't matter what it's about, they're just jokes. I talk about my life. So like you, when you've gone through a breakup, you talk about it. And when you're single... You talk about it, and it is a bit of an advertisement to the single mental ladies in the room, isn't it? Yeah. I used to have a line which was uh, about uh, girls want too much. They want a guy who's financially stable and doesn't take himself seriously. And the punchline was, they're mutually exclusive. And I would say, look, I don't take myself seriously. If you want someone who'll make you laugh, when I got on a date with someone, come up to me after the show, and I'll take you off for a drink. Jesus. But... My phone contract is in someone else's name. I'm not yeah. financially stable. Yeah. Big laugh. Ha ha ha. It's a it's a good joke and a not so subtle like sales Hi! It's actually really honest, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, I am a fuck up. A lovable fuck up though. Yeah. Come see me. <laughs> I'll be signing your tits at the bar. Uh, oh. but yeah, a lot of those uh, a lot of those girls uh, and people that are into that are like mental. Because there's loads of really sound, attractive women that I'm sure thought, oh, they're they're nice. But just went, I'm not fucking a comic. Are you all right, Carl? Sorry, I didn't mean that's the television. The screen was on. You could tell because Adam just went, zump. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Speaking of Australian comedians. Oh, nicely done, Rowie Bags. Uh, Today's guest is Thomas Green. He'll be in uh, shortly for us. Even shorter for you. Straight after this money comp break. Uh, God, I stopped calling them money (laughs) comps. We have less and less of them. Um, it's going to be that good stuff. You're going to really enjoy it. It's going to be really good. Tom Screen's coming up. See you after the break. Nice. Hey, listen to this. This podcast, have a word, yeah, is sponsored by Beer52.com. And we have been for about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate, okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. They send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine for free just by going to beer52.com slash word. All you do, pay the postage and packaging, eight free beers, free beer magazine, and a little tasty snack as well. And also, it helps us out. You support our sponsors. They support us. This thing can keep going. We can keep the have a weird gravy train on the fucking track. So go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing. Ladies and gents, welcome back to the third uh, section of Have a Word. You're not going to annoy me there. You started what? saying ladies before you pressed it. Really annoy me there. What? Because it'll be like, hey, ladies and gents. Do you want me to do it again? No, 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 it's fine. Hang on, let me just get fuck off, Finn. Do you want me to do it again? Cut that out. Go on. Um, ladies and that's your fault, Finn. Ladies and gents. Let's start again. Let's do it now. Right. Boys and girls, men and women, and everything in between. So inclusive, isn't it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, and those who don't identify as either. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. Fellas, bitches, and Jews. all the rest of y'all. All welcome. of y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to part three and four. What's this happening? Week's show. <laughs> Nearly did the what's happening white people again. <laughs> it doesn't work on this podcast. No. <laughs> motherfuckers, men, crazy ass women, crazy ass men too. 
men who have good mental health, women who have good mental health, people in the middle who have good and bad mental health. Ginger motherfuckers. Children, the kids, the teenagers. Anyone welcome listening to this podcast. Welcome to the show. Muslims. Yep. Muslims too. Well, now I've got to mention every Christians, religion. Christians, Jews. Hindus. Hindus. Sikhs. Buddhists. Ugh. Vegans. That's nah, not ve- yeah. Vegetarians. Um, Fruitarians. Fruitarians. Pescatarians. 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 Um, the Welsh. Ooh. Always the Welsh. Non-offending paedophiles. You know, oh, nice. If you yeah. can't help your feelings, yeah. as long as you're not fucking the kids, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Green's here. Yeah. Do you think? <laughs> what a transition! Yeah. <laughs> that reminds me. <laughs> Non-offending pedophiles. We've got a guest. <laughs> what are you thinking about? What the fuck? <laughs> Not kids. Yeah. <laughs> no, Non-offending pedophiles are definitely using the internet to watch this shit. That's what. That's what they're into. Hey, oh. Thomas, you're right. I'm good. How are you, mate? Absolutely cracking. Yeah. Got a sore throat. Have you? A bit busy. Just a little bit busy. The topic you've lot. just mentioned. I'm fuming, by the way. Why? Dan's in a really bad mood. I'm not just don't worry about it. He'll try and he'll try and hold it in. Is this why when I walked in, you asked if I was a bit stressed because you were no, projecting you from look, you two? You're one of the smiliest, happiest people yeah. I know. Well, love okay. hanging out with you. Consider you a great friend. Thanks, and I now know, because you told me, that you needed a poo. Yeah, I did. Right. M6 shit. But you you gave yeah. off a vibe of that drive was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's horrendous, and I'm I'm barely happy to be here, which is so off for what I'm used to with you. Yeah, like you were happier last week when you arrived to do my gig here, when you took nine hours to do a three-hour journey. You were happier then than when I just greasy like, hey Tom, you were like, I need a poo. Yeah, <laughs> that's a point though. Biologically, I think where you yeah. just you need a shit almost too much. Yeah, you, yeah, well, you, you were turtle about- heading. Yeah. And you're like, no, no. You were yeah. about to do your uh, poo in your pants in reception. 100%. That will stress you out. And there was a lady getting fucking PPE gear. And I was like, oh, I could just nick one of those boxes and wipe my ass in a minute. I will shit in your PPE. Yeah. Yeah, that mask would do I very well. I can understand well. why you were stressed. As soon as you got in here, you were a different man. Oh, mate. Fucking felt way lighter. Uh-huh. Happy on life. Um, I, but just before we move on and welcome our guest in properly, something is just on my mind because obviously we've been thinking of ways... We want to grow this podcast, Tom. Okay. Right? We want to really grow it. We want it to be the biggest podcast in the world. We're aiming for 200 million Patreon subscribers by the end of 2023. Right. Um, it's realistic. <laughs> Is that legit? You're aiming for that? 200 million. Yeah, it's legit. 200 million. Yeah, Same as legit. Netflix have got. No, it's twice Netflix. No, they've got 200 million. I thought it was 100 million. 200 million Netflix. Well, I said 300 million initially, then I realised Netflix got 200 million. And I was like, do you know what? That's yeah. probably our ceiling. But we're going to shit on Disney Plus. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you'll be really happy after that shit. Right? Here's the thing. So stressed. We mentioned non event Four. Right. None of and and you said, you, you just said something that struck a chord with me. Yeah. So you said, you know, they're not on the internet watching this. Well, you said they are watching this, but you're being facetious. And you're implying that they were on another bit of the internet. Yeah. Well, that's true. I'm just wondering whether it will help our growth if mm. we can get this podcast onto the dark web. Right. Do you know what I mean? So what, what do we have to do? <laughs> Snuff movies. <laughs> when you horrendous images of <laughs> innocence. Yeah. Have a word. We'll be the first podcast on the dark web. So what? Like Hollyoaks late night. <laughs> have, a, have a word. Dark web. How could we possibly like we, we talk sell about them drugs? We've got. We just spent five minutes in the first section talking about our dads getting bummed. <laughs> the only way we could make it darker is if we actually got your dad in. <laughs> Like on Have a Word normal YouTube, we talk about your dad getting bummed, but on Have a Word dark web, <laughs> it fucking happens. Mick's getting a phone call. I don't have a stripe. What? That'll be in the dark web. Yeah, oh. Should we open the cocaine? I really think this might be cocaine, you know. Why? Someone sent Because, it. right. Smell there. You know what cocaine smells like. <laughs> There's no point lying. <laughs> How dare you? He loves the booger sugar. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. Smell it. Has anyone got a knife? I've always wanted He's to do got, this. I've got a so, ninja star. So a fucking so, ninja star. <laughs> someone, perfect for a key. Go on, throw no. it over. Look, I know it's underarm. Throw it. Underarm. I know you're going to cut it open, but I want you to smell where I told you to smell. And I want to see your reaction. I want you to smell it. I want you to smell it. I, 
I swear <laughs> on my mother's grave, that has been nowhere near my bumhole. And I can see that's what you're thinking in your face. No, it looks I so swear, happy. No, but this is the statement. And how is that an acceptable statement in a workplace? <laughs> I want you to smell where I told you to smell. Smell the old. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old. It smells bad. like it's, it, I told you the other day. Yeah. Cocaine. So thanks for sending this in. This is getting us demonetized. <laughs> no. But it's going to be worth it if this is a kilogram of cocaine. Please. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do a key. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Still in the start. Can you imagine if I just went. That's <laughs> <laughs> caster sugar. Oh, no, is it? Either that or it's cat. How do you know it was caster sugar so quickly? Have you done that before as well? Well, I'm a caster sugar addict as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> cocaine and bacon is if one anything, of my favourite combos. If anything, this is actually worse for his health. <laughs> oh, God. I've lost my fucking I asked this half point, of my nose and I've got I diabetes. George, really funny. You're good. It's fun because I like it. Thanks. <laughs> the first appearance. <laughs> The first, the first appearance of that bag is on next oh. week's episode because we've already pre-recorded Gone it. back in time. So next week's episode is with Sean Walsh, who <laughs> did the gig with you last week. All right. And we, we talked about maybe opening that bag of cocaine on a Patreon episode, but it's going to be like Inception. What was it about? Like, I just want to just run this through you. Run this through you? Pass, yes. you know, pass, 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 pass. Yeah, run through is a different scenario, but we opened up, introduced the segue, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. And it was the dark web and then cocaine. Oh, I'm, this is a fucking strong intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. loving this. Yeah. yeah. It's very... You do get... Oh, yeah. You can get drugs from the dark web, apparently. Yeah. The silk <laughs> I want to know you what can. demographic the on the is dark it the web you're pitching oh, to. Oh, yeah. All of them. All, as long all as they're willing them. to sign up to Patreon for £3 a month, £5 a month or £10 a month, patreon.com slash half aware pod. As long as they're willing to sign up. I don't care what they do in their spare time. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Do you think all if right. they can work the dark web out, they can work out how to not pay for our Patreon? Yeah, is that a problem? Is no, that a, an no. issue? Unbreachable is security. Unbreachable. On the dark web, it'll have to be crypto. <laughs> Even though I see on uh, analytics every week that people watch our Patreon through WhatsApp. <laughs> Somewhere we don't put the Patreon no. link. Have you got Click and share, a crypto motherfuckers. payment system? Yeah, we have. Actually. Yeah, yeah it's a Bitcoin a month. Right. <laughs> Just one. And you can... One Bitcoin. You can literally do whatever you want to me or Adam. That's how that yeah. works. Oh, okay. In yeah. pay to bum my dad. And I watch it. Would you oh, let Bitcoin someone, a month? What was it, 40 grand now, Bitcoin? Would you let someone bum your dad for 40k? Yeah. I get all 40k. Does he ever say in it? Yeah. <laughs> That'll give you two grand. Wow. <laughs> you are a harsh dad pimp. 38 grand to you. You're keeping 38 grand. You keep, I just know. You keep those tri no, tri tricks. Tricks. <laughs> I just know that me dad could use two grand. So that's his price. My price <laughs> is 38 grand to watch me dad get bummed. I just love how serious. It's much harder to watch your dad get bummed than be me dad getting bummed. Do you know what I mean? It'll, it'll just be like having a big poo for him. Whereas I'll have that image in my head forever. <laughs> in reverse, like tenant. <laughs> just like. Oh, fucking hell. Just like tenant. <laughs> Everyone watches that film going, she's like <laughs> making my living off this, Thomas. <laughs> this silly, silly bullshit. Oh uh, how's your dad? <laughs> <laughs> how's he doing? Does he work for Cashin Am? Uh, <laughs> he's a nurse. Oh, is he? Oh, he's used to it. Though. He's used to it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is he really a nurse? Yeah, actual. In Australia. In Australia. Yeah. Where are you from in Australia? Adelaide. Adelaide. Uh, Mickey D's from Adelaide. Yes. yes. Oh, I love yes. Mickey D so, so much. Just spent the first three months this egg. year with him. Oh, yeah. I love him so much. He's one of my favourite people. Yeah, I went, we, we went to the New Zealand Comedy Festival. I went 2008. Yep. Never met him before. We were friends within, I'd say, about 35 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> he's just one of those guys who's just like, there's just no, he's like, ah, you're fucking great. And we were Bezos for the whole of that tour. Yeah. And his sister, and he told me about Adelaide. Yeah, you know like I, it's, you know it's a bit smaller than the bigger cities. Hundred yeah, percent, but a really good atmosphere. It's like a overpopulated country town, right? Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. not. It's a city, yeah. But it's like a country town where everyone fuck. So when you everyone knows each other, everyone knows each other. But when the main question you always get, and you know someone's from Adelaide, is they'll go, "What school did you go to?" That's the Adelaide question. That's what how school did you go to? 
I went to Cardinal uh, Heenan. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Everyone did. Fucking close. I went to Tyndale. It was, that was Why the is bloke. that close? Because huh? <laughs> it's a religious thing. You said Cardinal. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. This was always going to come up today. It was my intention to bring it up. Oh, it was it? It was a religious what, my, school. What, my school? It was, is that the start <laughs> of what you went into? Nah. Oh, you got to say, indoctrination started when I was a kid. Is that yeah. what we're talking about? Religion? Sure. Oh, I bit of a, you know. I thought we were talking about Mickey D. I was going to say, right. the, yeah. the reason I love Mickey D, <laughs> the reason I love Mickey D is because he's the only person who has ever voluntarily called me Rowie. And that was the name I tried to sort of, you know, when you want a nickname <laughs> at school. Like my my name on MSN Messenger was Rowie. <laughs> no one accepted no, it. No, everyone was like, Adam. In fact, Alan yeah, became we, a nickname of mine for a bit. We called him Alan. For and Power Ballad Alad. <laughs> I don't want no more. <laughs> Yeah, but he is the most Australian person ever. He's like, Rowie! Go- yeah. I'm like, yes, Mickey! Let's be friends! <laughs> yeah, he is. He is you have to ask. So, indoctrination. So, you oh, went Tyndale <laughs> was a Catholic school. Cushion man knows his segues. So what I Adam's getting at is that Thomas has a, a interest in childhood and past. Yeah, I do. I feel like we've sort of flirted around it, but not actually said what's happened. Oh, yeah, cult life, yeah. Cult. Life. <laughs> it's the only life I know. Ah. I was Dan doing Pac-Life. What are you do? All right, cool. Cold life. Everybody talking about cold life. Right. What do you know? What do you know? We should ask him about it, should we? Yeah. <laughs> Rather than do the theme tune. <laughs> you were in a cult. We used to sing that song in church, actually. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. Was it Christian? Yeah. Yeah, a Christian cult. So they would argue that it's not a cult because they don't think it is. It's just a stream of Christianity. It's called Pentecostal. If you know what Pentecostal is, it's the one where they fucking pray over you and they're led by the Spirit and fall over, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it was... When I got out of it, 28, that's when I realised, fuck, that was culty. So when you say they, they pray over you, like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. right. What, what, can you just elaborate on that? Because I feel like there's people watching who don't know what you mean. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically, they're trying to deliver you constantly from demonic holds on your life, right? And they can be coming from any angle, right? Uh-huh. Uh, now... I had people pray over me to try and, you know, uh, to deliver me or whatever. But they are, they would literally pray over people in church. Do you mean over? So you're on the floor and they're over you? You could be lying on the floor. Yeah. You could be kneeling on the floor. You'd be standing. They yeah. put their hand on your head. Like a oh. real Satan be gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Proper. Mate, if you want to get into it, I've got some fucking crazy shit to tell you. But like, we want to get into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You really want. So when did you? Yeah. T- let's get context. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What happened? What like? We, How you're born ha- into it? Were your family into it? What What's the story? I grew up in a very Baptist household as a kid. So age of five, you know, typical thing. Told in reception that you know, if you sin, you go to hell. And it's like, All right. So typical. Yeah, I had that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Catholic school, but yeah, yeah. St. Margaret. Not a, not a home though. What? You so you were home. raised Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. But you didn't get a home hell sin and shit, did you? In Not school. In the house. Yeah, but that's what it means. Household. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I, I had no, it. I, at school and church. Yeah. And like, at home, it wasn't like God doesn't exist. My mum wasn't like atheist. She was an alcoholic. <laughs> she was just like. Fucking <laughs> legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a man in the sky. And uh, <laughs> he, if you're being a cunt when I'm not watching because I'm fucking pissed, yeah. He'll fucking burn you to death. <laughs> <laughs> God, God says Get down to bargain booze for your mum <laughs> I've just had a message from God He says You think my ma's dead at a corner? <laughs> yeah, there's 20, 20 super kings <laughs> Did your mum smoke? No Drink? A little bit Yeah um, Not loads Did you ever get sent to the shop For your mum for alcohol as a kid? No yeah, I did. She had to go in and just like... How old were you? Like a child. Like I was like 12. With how the new, the how new fucking year. convincing what? was your ID? No, the fella just knew me ma. So I oh. would just go in and be like, can I <laughs> I'm have... I thinking, fucking no. hell. And I, I grew up like this I at grew, seven. I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting a beard. That's a great thing about having a fucking seven-year-old with a beard. <laughs> go on, love. 
<laughs> I just walk in and it, take the car. It's raining. <laughs> this place was called Kelly's Wines. Right, and I it, the that. fella behind there was called Peter. And I'd just go in and I'd piece of my mouth, sent me down for um, a bottle of vodka or half a bottle of vodka, and he'd be like, it's for your mum. Yeah. And this wasn't in the year 1830. <laughs> this was late 90s. This was um, early noughties. Oh, my God. <laughs> for every fucking law imaginable as, like, a licensed premises. And fucking but hell. one time, I tried my luck, because, I like, me, me and my mates were like, should we get some bevies? Yeah. And I was like, I'll just say it's for me, ma. And I walked in, and I was like, all right, mate, can I have... <laughs> Eight cans of Carl for me, ma. And he went, No, your mum drinks vodka. Get out. <laughs> if you'd have just thought it through. <laughs> so, different experience growing up for you, Thomas, by any chance? Yeah, no, I didn't get sent down to the fucking bottle to get some bevs. The bottle? Yeah. Bottle. Oh, we Wait. say the offy. Offy? The off license. The fuck is. Oh, off license. The off, off it. The bottle. So where you go and get off your fucking head. That's <laughs> yeah, you do. The, <laughs> the bottle. I mean, hey, it's quite tough. The bottle. Yeah. Literally, they'll have some branding where it's bottle hyphen O. Bottle But yeah, no, I. Uh, yeah, so raised very Baptist and then went to a very Baptist church my whole life. They're pretty I'm strict sure. anyway, aren't very, they? Very, very. Mm, so when I hit like my teens, I still didn't want to go to hell. So my idea of rebelling against that constricting environment was to go to a cooler church <laughs> so i went to one where there was like the young people up the front hip music i was like this is cool that's fucking be good yeah the first time i get there i, I remember walk. those cunts when we, we went on holiday in north wales and they made christianity <laughs> well, seem a bit cooler we're doing a christian group and rachel's fit and you're like well maybe i'm a christian you're like no she's just dead fit and they were like they sang the christian songs that we didn't sing at our oh. school they sang shit like Shine Jesus Shine. Oh, oh yeah. Fucking Rama. But never, Mate, did, did you ever you, That I, would go We off. never yeah. sung that at our, our church C of E. I felt like there was a way more like cool, yeah. like we sang boring C of E dull as fuck. We did yeah, Shine yeah, yeah. Jesus Shine. Gloria. Gloria. The in next Chelsea's day. And then down the way. World's like, Greatest by R. Kelly, as yeah. as now made famous by this podcast. <laughs> I feel like the C of E stuff would be similar to the Baptist. Which quite, right? Yeah, it's stricter, quite Hymnal, dour. They've got the numbers on the fucking hymn charts. You I, know, I was in coming. a choir, we did Psalms. You were in a choir? Psalms are like I was in a choir. shit hymns. Yes, Psalms <laughs> are just like two the notes. is not a choir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were both in choir. But actually? Yeah. I, I did one gig at an old people's home. It was eight of us. And then we retired the band. Got out while we were ahead. You know what I mean? <laughs> I played 40 and talked to girls. Them. What? Did you start the choir? What? You made it sound like you started the choir. <laughs> Lads, we're starting a choir. <laughs> did, you just, did you just rob an old people's home? Lads, I've got an idea. We can't get eight cans of Carly. Because <laughs> Peter's a smart cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, shine Jesus, shine. There's seven, there's eight of us. Let's go down the old people's own. Shine Jesus, shine. Fucking Jacko in the piss. <laughs> no, we were selected by the school. Had, oh, so and I wasn't like the leader, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I felt like I was. I bet you were. Well, you thought you were or you were? I felt like there was a, just a, an unspoken agreement. Did you stand at the front and was there fucking flying V behind you? What was Yeah, essentially. Are you a yeah. tenor? What? Baritone, what kind of voice are you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He was getting served at five. He doesn't so know. He's probably he big. doesn't fucking know what voice he is. You got him, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> was it a kid's choir? We weren't taking it that seriously. <laughs> probably tenors then, quite high. I had a solo bit. Yeah, the balls haven't dropped. How yeah. can yeah. you? Well, they're quite high, isn't it, tenor? No. Is it not? No, it's like the, it's the high man. Oh, yeah. Sopranos that. If you're a six-year-old oh, bass, <laughs> the doctor <laughs> really <laughs> fucked up your circumcision. I, I, I take it back. He had a beard at eight, didn't he? Yeah. I had a saxophone solo when I was Shine, Jesus, shine. I just did it with my mouth. <laughs> this is so much bullshit. Where is it? Just, I'm not messing. <laughs> do it now. We do like glory <laughs> in <Nick> Chelsea's day. <laughs> and then I just go. <laughs> <laughs> kind of bullshit <laughs> Catholic <laughs> school did you go to? <laughs> Saxophones you listen to. And then we'd come in for the final bit. <laughs> I'd take like 20 seconds before I joined back in with the choir just to give me voice a little bit of rest before I went back in. If anyone it. else went to a Catholic school and they don't recognise this, <laughs> the priest like, now nah, we need a uh, fake, <laughs> fake saxophone <laughs> solo. One day, I just did it and they went, 
do that on game night. And I was like, on oh, game yeah, night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on game night? Yeah, that's what they call Robin Hood. Was there a competition? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who'd you, who do you compete? Fair calls. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of owls come to the <laughs> fucking <laughs> Who did percussion? Your fat mate slapping his tits together. <laughs> like. Fucking, how big were his tits? <laughs> no. All true. So, oh my God. Yeah. Mm. Fuck her now. I was never in a choir. So, <coughs> so you went on your own to a different church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At so, 13, you were like, I'm break. What, what were your parents like about it that? Was, it wasn't like I went in and didn't know anyone. It was people from school who yeah, knew yeah. Yeah, who went yeah. there and stuff. And they were the cool kids and it was all- The cool know. Christian kids. Yeah, the, like you're talking about, fucking Rachel's fit. That, that, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, mob yeah. you're talking about. And so you go in there and I'm like, oh, fuck, people dress- chilled here like it's a bit low, low key that's how they lure you in right like what it's a all... way to rebel that is though I know. <laughs> I'm gonna do heroin well I'm going to the other church <laughs> heroin where sermons are longer <laughs> Thomas they wear denim <laughs> you fucking lost it <laughs> traitors on a Sunday Thomas you animal <laughs> love it oh <laughs> oh, what, couldn't, what couldn't you do then as a teenager? Can you what like, you mean? Can you not like talk together? Fucking, you couldn't do it. You couldn't even wank. Yeah, you couldn't do anything. But did you though? Well, I'm not meant to wank, wank though, am I? Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. You Mate, do. I, I, you, this is how bad it was, right? This is how much the guilt was on me. As a teenager, generally at the age of 16, I felt so guilty about wanking that I used to tell my mum every time I did it. <laughs> <laughs> That is, that is. I've got three questions. <laughs> My. Right. Uh, um, did you? <laughs> did you tell her you were about, not, This is 100% true. 100%. I believe 100%. you. Did you tell her you were about to while you were doing it or after you'd finished? Was it like just off for a wank? Was it, I'm wanking! It, or was it, Mom, I've come. No. Which one of the three? Oh, wow. It was so often. Did you word it just like Adam worded it? <laughs> Mom, I've come. He felt so guilty that he was masturbating as a young Christian, but he still worded it. Mom, I've just. I feel really bad. I can blind my light, man. No, it was it was so often that I, I would just call out from my room and be like, "Mom, I did it again," <laughs> <laughs> and she knew what I meant. <laughs> she knew. <laughs> she fucking knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. How did she react? Uh, she she used to get frustrated because uh, it would happen all the time. And I remember one time she and she because called she back. wasn't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> she literally called back to me and was like, "Oh, top sweetheart, you don't have to tell me every single time. Yeah, every other. Yeah, like yeah. a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> Intervals. Yeah, fucking crazy. Right." So, so where you go to the cool church. Yep. You don't with the cool kids. Yeah. <laughs> Are you thinking about how often you would have had to tell your mum? Well, you I just think I just think it's so hilarious <laughs> that you felt so guilty, but you couldn't stop. I think that's so funny. Because like, it's biological. I know, because 16 year olds, it doesn't matter how much you're scared of God or having to tell your mum. Yeah. You still can get hard. Even though, you know, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to have to tell my mum I've cracked one out. But at the time, <laughs> like, there's not enough of you to be like, that's so awful. I might not do it. You're it's like, 16 post, I've got to do it. guilt, <laughs> isn't it? Because you can't, this is the thing, right? The whole thing about religion and that guilt and making you feel bad for fucking feeling normal shit. Yeah. You felt guilt about sex. You felt guilt about everything. And it's just like, why? That's fucking normal part of life. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for sex. Yeah, Thomas. fucking oath. Fucking, yeah. 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 But yeah, oh man, unreal. That's, so you felt guilty about that. Uh, you felt guilty about, fucking, yeah, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't bang. You yeah. couldn't drink. You couldn't smoke. Couldn't hang around with kids that weren't from the church. How were they with that? It was very interesting. Because uh, my sort of experience being able to hang out with fucking normal people was through sport. So, you know, the footy club, that sort of thing. You'd meet normal kids who yeah. were like, oh, get fucked. You know, oh, he just said a naughty. Um, yeah. And they'd be talking about banging their missus, you know, when they were in high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. What is that like? You know, yeah. Was, <laughs> Do you tell your mum? 
Mom, I did it again. Did you put a fucking franger on your dick? <laughs> <laughs> so a franger is a condom. I just realised it probably isn't. Yeah. But we're learning words today. Botlo, franger. Yeah. I feel like people got franger from context because... <laughs> Just put a franger on your dick. That's condom, by the way. Not Is the it half franger <laughs> instead of coat hanger? Like, I don't know. What was that too fucking? Oh. Tom, yeah. just for the rest of the episode, <laughs> at no point do you ever have to check what you've just said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I've taken like, it too yeah. far. We had, yeah. black, we had a black darts players section in the last bit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was that actually... I thought that was just us chatting in the room. You actually talked about that on the pod. Yeah. For a good 15 minutes. I like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've got no expertise in darts, so I can't offer anything. No, neither can we. That's <laughs> not the point. <laughs> not That'd be British. <laughs> darts are very British game. Simon yeah. Whitlock is Australian, is he not? Who? Simon Whitlock. Who the fuck is that? The Wizard. Yes. The Wizard. Simon the Wizard Whitlock. Bro, we're talking about me coming out of a cult and you transition to I Wizards. Know, you it's gotta, not that far apart. You, but you've just got to keep. <laughs> you've just got to keep one like sort of finger on the story, and then we'll you know we'll go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have no, no, I'm saying, huh? Have a word is like a tree. There's many branches, but we always come back to the root. Okay. The root. That's another Aussie word for you. I mean, what's you root? Know, fruit? fruit means fuck. Oh, did yeah. you give her a root? Did you, did you give root? her a root? Did you root? Did, did you, you ro- give her did a you ro- fuck? <laughs> did, you- <laughs> <laughs> did you give no, her a but, fuck? No, don't talk to me about how you use the word fuck, because you guys say, this confused the fuck out of me when I first got here, when people say, oh, did I fuck? I was like, I don't know. You tell me, did you? I don't know. <laughs> did I fuck? And I'm like, what? Fuck's what a place as well. Fuck's the place. Get, get to, to fuck. fuck. Get to fuck. Yeah. 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 That sounds like a good thing. That means I, I don't want you believe to get you. to fuck, mate. Oh, okay, thanks, man. That means I don't believe you. Get to fuck. Yeah, if you go, oh, I had an eighteen person gangbang with seventeen Swedish women last week, I'd be like, yeah. get to fuck. That's more believable than your fucking choir story, though. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to tell your mum about that one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'd, f- I'd tell everyone about that one. That shit He's to be on going to hell. <laughs> Like as soon as the Swedes are involved, it gets messy. Yeah. I yeah. would think God liked me if I had a 17, <laughs> 17 strong Swedish lady gangbang. I think God might, might be like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 ha, 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 ha. When I finish with these girls, I'm getting a Euro Millions ticket because I'm feeling pretty lucky. <laughs> I might become quite religious. <laughs> oh, there is that promise on religion, isn't there, of something good. That's why, that's why people get involved, isn't it? They, they hook you in by, you know, you fucking... Why can't you have the good thing now, though? What? Yeah. I have the good thing now. So this is the thing. This is my my whole... So 28, when I got out of it all, I know we're jumping a little bit ahead, but... Yeah, it's okay. My whole view on life, without getting too emotional, was just... It flipped my grid because I was always thinking and almost selfishly thinking about, well... Does this life really matter? Because at the end of the day, it's fucking a part of eternity, right? Whereas now, I'm like, I'm an atheist, and I'm like, fucking, this is all I've got. I better make the fucking most of it. Yeah. Did you genuinely believe through all of that time, like, I've got to be good, I'm being watched, I'm being judged, and I want to get into heaven, so yeah, I, that I, would be amazing. It will be all of my dreams come true forever and ever. Looking back on it, I, there was definitely points when... Because I had I got severe anxiety as a kid in teenage years and stuff, and into my early adulthood, I had really bad anxiety as a result of all yeah, of that. A little bit yeah. of pressure, yeah, just, yeah. just a little, just a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I think there was because I I thought about it, and because uh, I wrote my show for Australia this year, which is about this story, I got to do a bit of reflection. I also had you know I've had some counselling and stuff, you know, post cult, and uh, I think. Genuinely, there were points, and I, I could lock down some points where I actually would question stuff, even as a 16 year old. Oh, what the fuck? Why is that cunt rolling on the floor over there? I don't understand. Like, and like, oh no, he's just been hit by the spirit. They, when I walked into this church the first time at 16, genuinely, I went from fucking hymns. There was a guy rolling on the floor. <laughs> now, this is 100% happened. Rolling on the floor. And I said, what's going on over there? And they said, oh, don't worry about them. They're the holy rollers. <laughs> That's the bell. <laughs> no, wow. but, and I, I genuinely, I was like, what's a holy roller? They're like, they have been hit and inundated <laughs> so much with the Holy Spirit that they cannot physically control themselves and they manifest. And that's how they manifest. Now, you're probably going to hit the fucking bell, but it's going to get a lot worse, Carl. It sounds like, like a skater gang. <laughs> <laughs> like those in a fucking rink. Fucking watch out for those guns. <laughs> the holy They're the holy rollers. <laughs> at the skate park. 
<laughs> they rock out. Stay away from the holy rollers. Christians on BMXs. <laughs> you know they're coming because they're coming down the road. Shine, she's the shine. <laughs> All the saxophone players oh. going, spot on. It's just like the instrument I've spent years. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so the... close to laughing out an actual poo. <laughs> <laughs> The holy rollers. Oh, yeah, 100%, though. Oh. 100%. So what happened when you didn't have one of those? When everyone's like, and doing, like, God-based... All right. Why, were you like, right. why am I not getting that? Oh. So, I... You're right. <laughs> no, I'm not. Where, where are them wet wipes? <laughs> just, just in case. <laughs> Finn's just been editing and he's looked up. He's about to. He's all right. Don't worry, Finn. <coughs> oh, I was half in. I was real. I hadn't said hello, mate. How are you? <laughs> uh, Adam, <sighs> don't need a poo. No, I'm, okay. I'm good. Carry on. All right. What was your question again, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so why it? did you never? Yeah, because if I got to a church and they were like, "These are the holy rollers," they're actually like having a fucking. Yeah. Why were you like? Why has that never happened to me? So, at first. No reaction. I was like, what the fuck? And I, and because it's the thing, people have different manifestations. It wasn't just fucking rolling on the floor. There were people <laughs> who I, I oh, fucking hell, he's not going to believe me. There were people in the back of the church who would howl like a wolf. <laughs> they were just, oh, in the back of the church. And I remember going, fuck it. It's like a fucking David Attenborough documentary going up in here. Like people were on the floor howling. But well, this is fucked. And then, uh, yeah, they probe you. Yeah. That sounds like me, mate. You used to play the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> He's crying. Woo! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fucking yeah. hell. So there was people who were like, oh, well. I, I just love how you're loving... The, the musical side, but I could just see Dan's like, I want to fucking know what happened. I'm dying to find he's out. Like, well, he wasn't. A, so yeah. he, he love it when he's in a really silly mood. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> Like I'm trying to do an interview and he's trying to do an impression of every instrument, the worst impression ever. <laughs> Sounded like a baboon in I, mating season. I am <laughs> so, so keen for his oboe. I want an oboe. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I am... Um, yeah, so at first I didn't have any like reaction and stuff, and I was like, "What's going on here?" And then I remember <laughs> that that <laughs> he's gone. It's yeah. Carl's gone, you know. I'm sweating like a bastard. Well. Oh. Oh, go on, go. On, I'll listen. <laughs> it's him doing the fucking saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> I set you up. <laughs> <laughs> Our church never had a saxophone, by the way. Yeah, I feel like you had quite a nice church. If you, you your saxophone is where you're going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we never had that. Fucking no. very Catholic thing. It's about abundance, isn't it? We just had demons being delivered. <laughs> yeah, so we've got holy rollers, werewolves, saxophones, are werewolf, werewolves, <laughs> werewolves. Werewolf. Where did werewolves come from? He said, "Holy rollers, werewolf." I said, "Howling like wolves." There was no fucking <laughs> werewolves. I didn't go to fucking Transylvania. <laughs> I mean, it may as well have because nothing there was fucking real. But anyway, so. Uh, they had, uh, <laughs> they had, uh, they prayed over me a few times, and then the one thing because they used to have the whole thing was about uh, prophecy and, and and prophetically speaking over you and telling things about your life, and I this is the thing they get you by you thinking right your whole life you've been involved in this, and when you go to this new church and all these people they're sound people they look up this is the thing they're not bad people they're all fucking indoctrinated as well there are bad people when they're leading it and taking advantage of these innocent people, but. I remember one day they were praying over me and he knew about my nighttime anxiety. Now, that was what made me go, fuck, maybe there's a bit of fucking reality to this because he fucking knew about something yeah. just only I fucking knew. Mm. And my ex, like, you know, my fucking 
I didn't think that there was a possibility that she could have told someone, that I could have told someone. It just felt like very or personal. Or that a lot of young men in the cult get nighttime anxiety. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, it's <laughs> a common just thing. Gone, yeah, and he looks like he might as he well. He might as well. I'm like, oh, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, so that spun me out a bit. And then uh, I thought maybe I should trust her a bit more. So trusting in it, I got prayed over one day and I just started laughing hysterically. Like Adam. Like laughing at like a hyena. And that was my fucking like, like laughing really high pitch was my sort of manifestation. And I remember thinking like, uh, it was like uncontrollable laughter. And looking back on it now, you go, fuck, was, what the fuck happened? And it's like, well, let's think about this scientifically and logically. Your brain is very, very powerful, right? And you can convince yourself of shit. And if everyone around you is convincing you that this is how life is and this is the reality, you start to believe and buy into that reality and you trick yourself into thinking that something's happening. Nothing was fucking happening. But your brain is, controls your whole body, right? So I was just laughing. And I used to think, and so it was almost like Pavlov's dog. When I get prayed over, I just laugh. And that was my thing. And they were fine with that. They weren't like, he's taking the piss. No, 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 no. Not Why won't he just howl like a wolf, like a normal fucking Christian? <laughs> 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 Why did he roll out? You had to roll on the floor or they, stop fucking laughing at me. They had to open the doors one day because a lady wouldn't stop rolling into the wall. So they opened the door, she rolled outside. I'm right, I'm not having that. No. That's bullshit. That's I'm bullshit. not. Bullshit. Marjorie's <laughs> off. You might as well let her roll to the car. <laughs> Jesus, Jeff. <laughs> Straight into a fucking busy road. She, she lives at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> she, she'll be fine. <laughs> Saves on taxes. <laughs> I don't believe you. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> no. no, come on. Why would I make that shit up? She just rolled into a car park. Huh? <laughs> there was lawn outside. Oh, nice. Oh, obviously she's just yeah. rolling around the lawn. Yeah. But did someone go out with her to make they, sure she There okay? used to be people who like would wave flags outside. They'd wave flags. Yeah. Yeah. This guy outside normal. with the music. Not, not wave so this isn't the cult, yeah? This isn't the Pentecostal church. Is this the Pentecostal yeah, church? Of yeah, of course. Right, yeah, sorry, Baptist sorry. church ain't yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. howling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was, uh, yeah, Penties. Yeah, they were loving it. <laughs> and where were you living? Were you doing a job at the time? Were you at college or? No, I was married. Got married at 21. She was wow. 19, yeah. So another member of the cult? Yeah. So we, we actually, we were, we started dating when I was, I was 16. And then uh, we went to the, we went to the Baptist youth group. And then uh, I went to this church and she came with. And then, yeah, married a few years later and was involved with the church, yeah. And your parents are fine with you being part of this church at this point? Mum was a bit sceptical because it was a bit like, fuck, there's a bit of crazy. But I remember thinking in my head, because on the Sundays, the people were so genuine, so kind, and, you know, they're good people, Yeah, most of them. They, you felt part of something because it was like a community, it was a community. And I mean, they, they, this is the thing, like, this is how they lure you in because there's financial support, there's, there's, uh, fucking sporting teams there's you know so many events that they do and you feel part of this community and there's yeah. some good fun people involved in that can i ask you just a question before we carry on yeah it's very on this bit yeah. so you say there's financial support and there's a community vibe and all that sort yeah, of yeah. stuff but it's a cult and by definition doesn't a cult have to be sort of exploiting its members yeah so in what way were you being exploited Told that there was a hell. No, no. I, so but they don't define themselves as a cult, do they? No, no they wouldn't. No, they, they and wouldn't. They, and they, they no. Like you, it's a, it's a matter of opinion that they're Nobody a cult. Nobody does, though. Do yeah. you? It's only after the fact. Yeah, really. it's just an extremist church. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is exactly, and it's part of a. There's a big group of churches, and so we would have American people come over and, and preach to us. But the exploitation would be one example. Would be um, so. It's quite a biblical thing. You might know of this in the CV. I don't know if it's the same thing, but you know, in, in Catholic churches, you have tithing. Yeah. And you give a tithe. Um, I grew up giving up. You give up ten percent of your income. Right. right? Okay. And so, uh, for me and Mike was a teacher, and so we gave up ten percent of our income. And then uh, I found out a while later that uh, the head pastor of the church had asked a specific young group of people, young, right to give up a further 5% of the income and that went directly to him. So yeah, there's uh, your yeah. fucking exploitation. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. God tax. Well, tax, so you would give 20 up... 20% to the government, <laughs> a little bit to national insurance, then God takes 10%. <laughs> <laughs> Seems legit. Does he pay tax on it? Does he fuck? <laughs> God don't pay tax. Does he fuck? There we go. There's that fucking... Does he fuck? There you go. Does he fuck? Does it, it sounds better in your accent though. Does he fuck? 
Yeah. What was he for? Um, but yeah, so there's your exploitation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's got a cult vibe, hasn't it? Yeah. You can be part of our gang. But there's. But we're going to need 10% of everything what, you What were you getting from it, though? <coughs> were you getting like guaranteed heaven spots? No. <laughs> but buying, yeah, you fucking, you pay more, you get a VIP front row with God. You'd want something. The gold off. package. The gold. If you pay twenty percent of your income, you'll be front of the queue when you die. <laughs> yeah, ten percent across yeah, the fast board. Fast pass for the pearly games. Yes. Yeah. No, but you know how they <laughs> like in Disneyland actually. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> got all my fucking receipts here. Sorry, 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 sorry. All you people who've had a long, painful Excuse death you. didn't believe in God at all. I'm sound. Usher in. Usher Where's in. the water slide? <laughs> yeah, ushering past all the saxophone players. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're some fucking music they don't even in that queue, though. They're there because they're too busy in their fucking. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was getting married at 21 like? Oh. Uh, were you just like, of course we're getting married. We've been seeing each other ages. Yeah. Do you know what? And and this is the thing. I'll, I'll never say a bad word about her. But you're a lovely girl, but totally different people. But at that age, that was the norm, right? I remember that. That year or two, there was like a whole stack of my mates who got married. We've been each other's weddings, right? And then, what did you do for a stag do? A stag do, I <laughs> my stag do. I went to a, I think I went to a bowling alley, <laughs> a pool hall, and that was about it. And nice. all drank diet coke. Oh, I had a couple <laughs> bevs, but I remember getting. Um, you get judged for drinking, even. Do you know what I mean? Like it was a. Yeah. It really, and that was some, so there were still mates from the Baptist church that came along and they were very strict, as you probably know, CV, they're very strict on, on drinking and that sort of stuff. That's a big no. Um, but yeah, no, getting married at 21, like I now upon reflection, looking back again, everything's lovely in hindsight. Yeah. I'll look back and I go, she was lovely, but totally different person. I didn't know who I was back then. I was still learning who I was. Fucking, I was told that my identity was in Christ, whatever the fuck that means. Can I ask another question just before we move on? Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. on the drinking thing. Right, mm. so you're not allowed to drink. So you know the wine in the church, is that just like a Heineken Zero? No, it's uh, grape juice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You have real bread, though. <laughs> Heineken Zero. <laughs> the, you the, can get the blood no. of Christ. Fucking, is this lager? <laughs> <laughs> so working glass, I love it. <laughs> like, Fucking hell, there's a lot of head on the blood of Christ. <laughs> Who's poured this? Adam didn't know any wine then. He went straight to lager. Well, I didn't. Think, I can't think of a branded non- alcohol-free wine. <laughs> Grape juice is a great example. Vimto. <laughs> yeah. Vimto is very alcoholic. Is it? It is. So I'll show you now about wine. <laughs> what, you calling bullshit on? Just the oh. answers. Oh, okay. I was, I was at a start. That was like a teacher bell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, it needs bell. doing. It needs doing. This is the bullshit bell. Dan presses this when I'm talking shit. Yeah. Or when he thinks uh, I'm talking shit. And my favourite thing is getting him to press it when I'm actually telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, I have a sore finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think as well, like, people get confused about, you know, how you can identify it as a cult. You were saying it before, like, huh. how, how was it a cult? But the reality is, is how much they influence and, and are embedded in all your facets of your life. So that you asked about what it was like being married at 21. Fucking a lot of pressure, bro. Like a lot. You're married at 21. I was told that I wasn't being a good spiritual leader in my household. Like, cause, Why not? Because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't attending. This is when I started. So I started doubting some stuff and right. calling things out. Uh, simple questions. And they'd be like, that's between, you need to sort that out between you and God. But you need to start leading your, uh, your wife uh, better spiritually because I wasn't attending enough because I was playing sport. So I had two elders come and visit my house, just sit me down at my table. And this is the thing as well, like when you're talking about like being involved, they wanted to know everything like <laughs> sex life, uh, fucking like, like all the nitty gritty details of your life. And I said, why we're going to sit you down and chat to you. Why are you not attending a uh, Wednesday prayer meeting? And you're only coming once on a Sunday because it was two. So it was, it was a Wednesday night prayer meeting and there was a Friday night small group and you had Sunday morning service and Sunday evening service, right? Uh, so your weekend was pretty much gone. And then if there was other events, that would happen too. Sometimes we'd have a week long, weekend conference with the guys from America would come over. Anyway, they sat me down and they asked me, you know, when, uh, you know, why, why are you not attending? And at the time I was playing American football, which, you know, I fucking loved. And they said... Um, you're putting sport 
before God and you're not allowing your wife to access Christ. You're cutting off that spiritual line from your household. And I was like, Fuck, okay, so obviously God's a misogynist, right? <laughs> she can only access it through me. Um, but he, they asked me, so when, they said to me, when did this addiction to sports start? That was the word, addiction. I remember going, what the <laughs> fuck? So anything that came in front of God was considered an addiction. A vice. Uh, yeah, right. So I, uh, I was like, that's, that's fucking bullshit. I, this isn't an addiction. I said, well, I've always loved sport. I was like, I've loved it since I was a kid. And they said, um, right, so, you know, who, like, how did you get involved with sport? I said, that was how I connected with my dad. My dad grew up in a very strict household. He's chilled as fuck now. But when I was a kid, he was very strict. But we connected through sport. He took me every Saturday morning to footy. That was how we connected. Every Saturday morning, he'd take me to footy. Um, Aussie rules, by the way, not... English football. But, um, yeah, they said, oh, so your dad led you astray. Your dad influenced you and you're trying to please your earthly father and not your heavenly father. And I was like, what the fuck? How did you not tell him to? Fuck. I, pr- I, tr- I suppose you did in the end. Yeah. I, I really, yeah, in the end, yeah. But I just remember going like, how can you judge my dad? They didn't even know my dad because he wasn't didn't go to the church or anything. My old man is like the nicest dude, like so lovely, absolute sweetheart. But yeah, they're telling me that my old man taking me to footy on a Saturday, how we connected as a father and a son, they're telling me that that's now affecting my life and I cannot, I shouldn't be putting sports. So I was guilted for playing sport and I played a really good level. That is the cult. That's, yeah, the so different, that's the difference between a church and a cult, isn't it? Right? That sort yeah. of shit. Yeah, exactly. Where you're right. like brainwashing. Yeah, totally. The guilt with that. Uh, yeah, again, like, who the fuck needs to know about your sex life? Why are they asking that? So that's when it gets a bit fucking weird, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the only people I tell about my sex life, like, obviously, me and my missus talk about it. Patrons. Uh, and about 40,000 people every week on here. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, though. Goes no further. Yeah, but they don't ask. Goes no further. <laughs> we just tell them. End of 2023, it's going to be 200 million fucking people. <laughs> 200 no. million patrons. We're aiming for, like, 3 billion listeners. Yeah. Okay, fair. Mm-hmm. Half the world. No. <laughs> Half the world? Uh, and ideally, we'll ask for 10% of their income. <laughs> I mean, that's where we want to go. Knocking on. Hey, you've cancelled your Patreon. <laughs> You're really getting in your wife's hey, way of being yeah. in to have a word. You've cancelled your Patreon. Are you still fucking your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Adam turned it up. <laughs> brother Adam and brother Dan are knocking on. Look, we're looking to get you back on board. We'll do anything we can. Yeah. Here's my favourite number. <laughs> 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 How, how, how about a song? <laughs> so you, how does your wife sit? How did you, obviously you left the church now. Yeah. You're, you're a fucking circuit comic. It couldn't be much more other side of the spectrum. Yeah, bro. But how, so does your wife now see you as like, when she, when you, did you split up when you left the church? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, speaking of comedy, I, I was told I wasn't allowed to do it. Yeah. So I started doing open mics in Adelaide with fucking Mickey D. And I was told Can that... I, fair to say, not a lot of brilliant Christian, like devout Christian stand-ups. <laughs> None of my favourites <laughs> are devout Christians. Is that yeah. fair? Some of the best comic, I don't know, they're always they the devout They could believe Christians. it that I would say, like, dickhead. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my God. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was told I wasn't allowed to do stand-up. And that's when I was like, oh, I fucking I love it. Like, it, I've always liked comedy and when people laugh and... You know, that's when I was like, nah, fuck this. But I, yeah, so in answer to your question, we haven't spoken since uh, we parted ways and separated. And then... You were like, I'm leaving the church and I'm leaving you. Yeah, we sort of, uh, we fell apart. And then, so we, we ended. And part of that, that was kind of us breaking up was me also breaking up with the church. In my head, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it yeah. was me. What a pressure breakup that is. Oh, yeah, it didn't end well. Uh, <laughs> it, no, I mean, she was again lovely, she's very amicable, she's a sweetheart, and I'll never say a bad word about her. But her friends, yeah, <laughs> that didn't go well. I am, um, no. yeah, I, oh. I, I can totally relate to what you're saying because when I split up with my ex, that was also me breaking up with the dog. Yeah, the dog was like the church. It's took ten percent of your dinner, just to me. Do you know what I mean? Just the same. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Yeah. Often yeah. the dog would look at me and be like, "You fucking had enough." He knew everything about your sex life. It was always in it. <laughs> he didn't say. It. You could tell in his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, nice. <laughs> wow. Get it right. 
Oh, I God. love it that so, like lo- loads of people like do stand up and have had to give up certain things. You have to give up church, wife, and that. It, what a great way to start doing stand up. Oh, that it was so. That was the thing is like I I wasn't perfect in the way I went about things. I definitely uh, hurt people, but I needed to. I knew deep down that I needed to get out and cut off that cord, mm-hmm. and. I never, I never was really truly happy. Like even getting married at twenty one, like I said, I didn't know who I was. But I got married, and I'm like, I'm not fucking, I'm not happy. I remember on my fucking wedding day, being like, oh, okay, this is this is happening. That's not a healthy thought to have. You know what I mean? That's not a good foundation. No. But I, I kind of, I mean, accept- to say, I've been been married, and I definitely wanted to get married. But there was a few moments when I was like, okay. This is happening. Like there is a little bit of shell shock because you're like, oh fuck, we're at this point. I don't know why people get nervous about getting married. Nah. Because if it's really shit, you can get it annulled within a week and no one even knows it ever happened really. Not when as you're long in as you burn the photographs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicole, yeah, but that's... I mean like him. Do you know what I mean? You get it annulled within a week, and then if you want to get a divorce, get a divorce. It's just that easy. It's not as permanent as it used to be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Divorce is so it's easy like, as well, yeah. Do you know when you book a holiday, but you but you don't? And no one even knows, apart from the 300 people that were there. <laughs> yeah, but you just burn the photos. Like It's like booking a holiday when the deposit's like a quid. It's like, I'll pay for the rest when, I, when, I, when I'm going. Yeah. It's a fucking, another solid point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> another solid point from Professor Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell! Are you doing a show about this? This is what you're showing. You go. You said you're going to Australia. You're going to do Adelaide, Melbourne. You're going to do the festivals. Yeah, and this so is I what did, the show is going to be about. I did. So I called it cultivated. Bit of a pun there with refining and educating That's yourself. A solid title, mate. And uh, thanks, mate. And then yes, yeah, so I did that in Perth, Adelaide this year. Uh, literally went up with a notebook and just started fucking telling my story. I had someone call out fucking like doing a bell, but after the show, but like, no, 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 I don't believe that, man. But so many people went, oh my God, like, especially because Adelaide's the city of churches and Adelaide had people come to my show who were from the church. That was interesting. How did yeah. that go? So first night in Adelaide, after doing it in Perth and getting to a point where I was like, right, I've run it in for a month now, brand new hour. All right, here we go. Game on. It's where it all fucking began. And I was bricking it to say the least. Do you know what I mean? Like rocking up. And then first night, second row, two lads from the church who I knew and were really close with back in the day. And I was like, oh, fucking hell. And they sat there. And about halfway through the show, I was sort of seeing you know, one of them was absolutely pissing himself. And I was like, oh, this is all right. Like, you know, I felt relaxed. The first 10 minutes, I was like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Relaxed into it. I was like, this is my fucking story. Because actually, it was Sloss who told me to tell the story. Of course. You've yeah. to, you can't have that story and yeah. never make he was like, Yeah, you're a what? white straight bloke with the most interesting story <laughs> ever. You're the only white straight bloke in comedy that's actually got a story that's like, fucking hell, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was like, you're an idiot, but I fucking tell it. So, yeah, anyway, second night, uh, first night, uh, two guys, second row, after the show, they came up to me and I was like, how did you find it? It's good to see you. And they were like, mate, Fucking loved it. We don't go to the church either. Do you want to go get some beers? And we just went out for some beers and it was fucking awesome. Oh, right. So yeah. So it that's as well. So they fucked it off. Yep. Yep. Is there you anybody know? who stays in? Hey? Is there anybody who like stays? Lifers. Like, yeah. Yeah, totally. So there's people, and this is what the sad bit, is that they still think it is like, that is the be all and end all. Do you know what I mean? I, I know that my ex has left that particular church. I don't. I know she's gone. Different, she's still friends with my sister and stuff. Uh, and she's doing well, but she's gone on to a different church. I don't know what kind of church or whatever, but I know she's left that one, which makes me happy because I'm like, that church was a bit fucked. Um, you know, I mean, I haven't even told you the real gnarly shit. I want to see if I can spin his grid a bit. I'll do it. Go for Please it. do. Right. We had a guy come over from America. We had quite a few, but um, I'll, I'll ease you in, Carl. All right, this... This guy came over from the States. He was a proper, proper Tennessee kind of guy. He was going to tell us how the Lord is going to come to Adelaide. And he was telling us he had visions of gold coins uh, and that God was, there was a richness going to happen. Now, now, you have to understand that the church was in Salisbury East in Adelaide. And oh. if you've never been there, it's like the northern shitty part of Adelaide. It's, a, it's not a nice socioeconomic area. So it was like, oh, God's chosen here. Okay. 
to make it rich and spiritual nature. So God chose to buy a church where property was really cheap. <laughs> God he said, have to pay taxes. God, it's really affordable and holy. Here, this bit of town. Not in the posh bit. It's too expensive. Yeah. God's really Very frugal convenient. like that. <laughs> Until he gets his extra 5% easy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, yeah, this guy, he, he, he claimed that um, there was three visions that were happening and uh, this took a bit of a spin. And the three visions or three signs that God was manifesting, uh, by the way, Carl, this isn't the crazy bit yet. Okay. Uh, the three signs were through oil, uh, feathers and gold dust, right? So God was going to show that he was manifesting his presence through those three things. So people would be uh, anointed in oil. They were dripping with oil. This is what he claimed he was seeing in America. And it's always stuff. I mean like fry, like, like vegetable oil. Fry light. Like, <laughs> I, like, is it? So in their Old Testament, the Bible, <laughs> they would anoint someone by putting oil on their head <laughs> and that was God anointing them. Yeah, but when you say oil, yeah. do you mean like the stuff you'd <laughs> cook chips with? Oh, I don't know. I never fucking... What, do you mean as in, was that poured on? No one was pouring it on. They were claiming it was just coming out of their head. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Uh, well, that, okay. that, that it, got, it would be a supernatural... <laughs> going oil. up and going, Ksh, fry light on someone. <laughs> fucking God, that. It's got a greasy forehead. It's got fry light all over it. He's so, <laughs> it's just, hey, if you're sweating oil... <laughs> a bit of canola. You, you are going to see God really soon, aren't you? <laughs> Stop eating chips, you fat fuck. Sweat and oil. Good God. Fuck. <laughs> Fry light. Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I'm feathers. enjoying. Oil, feathers, and what? <laughs> dust. Gold dust. Gold dust. So the two that I knew straight away were total bullshit was the, the gold dust and the oil because I remember someone claiming that they was anointed in oil, but I'm like, we're in Australia. It's 40 degrees outside. It's the middle of summer. And our church is essentially a shed. You're sweating, bro. Right? And then the other one was the uh, the gold dust. And I remember someone freaking out that they were, their, their hands were shiny. But they they had, it was fucking like foundation. You know how it gets sparkly? Yeah. Right. So the third one was the feathers. And I remember <laughs> I was asked to be on the welcoming team at the front of the church. And I was stood there and this... Lady was walking up. <laughs> the lady was walking up, and I saw this feather fall and land on her shoulder, and everyone like freaked out, like, "Oh right. my god!" That eight, ten people in the foyer came over, and were like, "Oh my god, you, you've got a." They didn't say, "Oh my god," but they had, "Oh, you've got a feather on your shoulder." Uh, God's upon you, and I remember thinking, like, I literally saw the pigeon fly over. And that feather landed on your shoulder. You know what I mean? I was like, nah. And then he... he, he oh, bro, just a word in defence. Oh, fuck. Of I think God. I'd believe that. What? The feather? Yeah. Like, if it, if this fella's gone... Hear me out a sec, right? <laughs> 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 if this fella's gone, God's going to manifest himself with feathers. And just by fucking coincidence, a pigeon flies by and it's like, it's a feather, lad. Then I'd be like... Yeah. It is a, it is a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That, that one, I'd be like... Adam's got one it, foot in the church already. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, they're, gonna, look, they're looking for a sax player. He's going <laughs> to... Get a bit off you. CKP, get a new agent. You can have 10%. <laughs> I'd like to play a lot of churches. Hey, um, what was the fuck thing? The, the what? What was the fuck thing? The fuck thing? That was the really fuck thing, the feather. Oh, no, 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 no. So um, then the guy uh, came in and the same guy, and you can look these guys up. Uh, this, this bloke um, had a video. His name's Jeff Jansen. He had a video on YouTube, and he claimed that he told a, a uh, tornado to uh, move. It was coming towards them, and he told it to move, and it moved and just destroyed all the other homes in the town. So you watch the video, like, no, that just changed its course, bruv. Like, you didn't... Oh, he looks like an absolute dick. Right, yeah. Can you put the telly on so we can see him? Uh, yeah. I would have loved that guy to die in a tornado. <laughs> I told the tornado to go away. <laughs> it's still coming. <laughs> God. Uh, uh, so this Stand is the thing So, the, oh. yeah, then, no, these guys... This is the thing. So, in Adelaide this year, when I went back, Dan, to do the, the tour, 
I was talking to my sister because she she doesn't believe in it either, right? Uh, and she was telling me about how they're all really intensely massive Trump supporters now. Oh, right. Yeah. And I went, oh, okay, of course, of course they are, right? Course, and, yeah. and they started, they were praying at the church for Trump. This is other. And God wears Under Armour as well. Now he he's the one who rocked up with he rocked up with a, a massive ruby, right? And claimed that an angel had visited and dropped the <laughs> ruby into his his home. Right, the, the ruby was <laughs> falling off his. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's he? He's getting. I he's getting me drink. a can of coke. Is he? Yeah. Oh, could I have another one? He wants a diet. Do you want a cold diet? Cold coke? diet coke, yeah. please. Yeah, thanks, man. Drink soda. Oh, this is fucking great. Can you get me some fry light? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have it all up. <laughs> Such a mad fucking story. So, Jeff Jansen. So Jeff Jansen, thanks, man. Thanks, bro. Um, he just uh, the focus, Carl. He He's just. So he uh, he dropped this past the jewel around the church show us that you know, and that's the thing. You saw something real with substance, so it's it's starting to try and spin your grid a bit. Like this is fun, and so you try and believe the story. And this thing with religion is, if you think about the Bible. And all the batshit crazy stories that happened in there, right? Um, and that's the religion that you were born into, and you're told this is the, like, you know, Aaron or whoever the fuck it was in the book uh, when he saw a burning bush that spoke to him. You'd be like, cunt, that's DMT. But <laughs> back then, it was like their lives were so fucking unscientific and unknowledgeable. And if you heard a crazy story back then, you want to yeah, believe course. it because your life mystery was mystery and voodoo. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, how. Long that's evolved over how many years and people still believe them to be true. So that's the kind of thing that was happening still today. Like, hey, look, what's happening today? What miracles happening? Well, let me tell you, this is happening in America right now. This is happening in your city. And this other guy came along. Now, this is when it gets crazy. Uh, you can look this guy up. His name is Jason Westerfield. All right. So <laughs> I didn't mean to fucking point until you do that. <laughs> look so this guy. Look this shit up. For? Uh, now, right. yeah, that guy there. Looks yeah. like a Jesus as well. fucking Christ. A long no, this guy. He's not doing weekends, is he? You know? <laughs> 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 he's, got, he's got Wednesday night, new material night written all over it. <laughs> 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 that cunt definitely doesn't do his time. Do you know what's so good? Is I just, I just love... Hearing Dan tear this whole thing down. <laughs> it's so cathartic for me because this was my reality, bro. So, right, he came to the church, right? And he used to, so you, okay, again, the exploitation, you would have to buy a ticket to go to church that weekend to see him preach. And he would do a, sat a Friday, Saturday, Sunday and each night. And uh, sometimes he'd have a matinee performance almost sort of thing. And after you'd book like the your ticket. Jungles, that, isn't it? One on a Friday, one on a Saturday. So it costs like 130 show. bucks. So like what, oh, 70 man. quid for the weekend. And you'd go for the weekend and you'd uh, hear him preach. Um, at the end, they would have generous giving, not tithing, generous giving. So you'd put my money in. This guy was doing a fucking paid Edinburgh show and a bucket. Yeah. <laughs> he was rolling in it, right? Now he came along and he told us... Um, uh, he would and so he would talk at a really really fast rate, like I'd talk really quickly, and he'd tell these and he would talk for three four hours, and that's no exaggeration, right? But he would talk so fast so rapidly, people would think that he was so anointed in spirit because he's operating at such a fucking high level. I don't know what drug he was on, but everyone was like, "Holy shit! Like this is unreal!" Right? That they would just eat up all the shit he was spewing out, right? Um, and I mean, he was talking about how his child. Uh, was a stillborn and he went and placed, he took it out of the room and laid it on his bed and he laid on top of the child and put his head on his child's head and the child came back to life. Wow. Right? That's one story. The crazy one. <laughs> this is mate, you'd love Freddie Quinn to be in there going, never happened, mate. What the <laughs> fuck? How did everyone in the room after that long be like, Wow, I bet that was good. I, and this is the thing, I'd question it and I'd feel guilt, right? Because it was like, well, I'm meant to be spiritually leading my wife in the house. I'm questioning stuff. What's wrong? It wasn't, you didn't accept your questioning as 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 logic and being reasonable. You you thought guiltily of it that you were fucking up and that you was something wrong with you because everyone else is sound. Well, you're brainwashed, man. You're yeah. brainwashed, yeah. So the one uh, thing that he told us, 
and this is my favourite thing that I was told, and this went in my show in, in Australia, was uh, he rocked up at this conference and he was telling us that he woke up one night and he woke up. Now, you've got to understand, in the church, there was about three, 400 people watching because it was packed out. And he said that he woke up one night in his own ejaculate and he woke up just and at the end of his bed was a demon. And this demon came up and stole his seed and ran through a portal <coughs> into a different realm and he had to get out of bed and chase the demon down to get his seed back so that his seed wasn't being used elsewhere in the universe. Yep. That'd be my first reaction as yeah. well. I'd close yeah. with that. If I seen it... <laughs> <laughs> I'd definitely close with Jizz that Demon. Would, that would get, <laughs> that's if gonna, I woke up and I was crazy. covered in my own cum and then a demon ran through a magical little tunnel with it, my first thought would be, get back here, lad. <laughs> <laughs> that's mine. I think I'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I, what? So, lad? I, that's my Jizz? <laughs> Like, I'm a jizz demon. <laughs> what the fuck? Hang on. What a weird Hang job on. as well. You're so a thieving <laughs> jizz demon. How did he know? That the, like, how did he know? Because I imagine he's meant to be this religious guy, so he doesn't wank either. So Hence I'll, why he's had a fucking wet dream, isn't he? Or, and he's felt guilty about it. Or the demons come in, spunked all over him, and then forced, I can't leave him looking like that. I wiped that up before I go. <laughs> Or hey. the demon wanked hey. off. So, how do you tell your mum about that one? <laughs> mum! I've just had to chase a jizz demon into a different realm to get my jizz back. All right, Thomas. Probably don't tell me about every jizz demon, sweet pea. Love you. Oh. Did he give it back? Yeah. <laughs> if, he, if he gives it back, use a fucking Kleenex. <laughs> I, I, Mate, we, what yeah, the fuck? I, I had. There is no topping Jizz Demon. I don't know where you're trying to go with this story. <laughs> no, no. If you can top Jizz Demon, I will be very fucking surprised. Tom's like, no, I really need to finish Jizz Demon. Uh, no, I had my favourite heckle in Adelaide because I was telling that bit of the story. And my question was, how did the demon. I called him a wank demon, but Jizz Demon's great. Might use that. How did the wank demon collect the Jizz, right? Did. Because did he come up and fucking scoop it? Bounty. What? One sheet. A bounty? bounty? No, the fucking Bounties kitchen roll. What, a fucking dip it in coconut chocolate? What do you mean? No, the kitchen yeah, I, roll. Yeah, I did think chocolate. I thought you were come up and just went, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, you mean blitz? No, like, the, the kitchen roll, that soaks everything up with one touch. <laughs> not the coconut chocolate bar. Not the coconut, <laughs> not the coconut Are you sponsored yeah. by Bounty? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you collect your views if you're a jizz demon? <laughs> Picks right. everything up with only one touch. Wet wipes. <laughs> <laughs> they might not be wet when you start. They will be when you're finished. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Come. Oh. Come's wet. Come's wet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> At the advert. Comes, you know I mean? Comes wet. <laughs> Comes wet. So he, he, I mean? he heckled going, Oh, it was a lady. Right? Uh, and it was the most Australian thing ever. So I said that how did, did the wank demon scoop it up and then try not to spill it as he jumped through the portal. Um, and this lady just goes, oh, get fucked. You get a tissue and you just grab it. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. That, that is fucking great. Oh, God. Right. Was that your out point? Sorry to call Oh, my God, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, you can't beat this demon. I mean, how long did you stay in the cult? After <laughs> oh, the right. I, that was probably a couple of years after that. That was 2012 so or 2013. Jizz demon. I'm like, I'm giving this another 24 <laughs> months. And that's it. That was a little silly, but <laughs> I don't have to spend that extra 10%. Two more years <laughs> to convince it. me, but not a minute more. <laughs> I'd have been gone. Man. You gotta admit though, it's fucking entertaining. You're in there. You, you got a great story every week. Jizz Demon to be one of them. You know yeah. what I mean? Fucking feathers, gold dust. Like, it's entertaining shit. That feather one's So that, that, my point, <laughs> I did have a point for Dan, though. Feather one's not quite as, like, the feather one's like, oh, 
Jizz demon's a real shift up the gears, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. She <laughs> like Marjorie got a feather on her shoulder. <laughs> Fuck Marjorie. <laughs> I Jackson jizzed, on, I jizzed, jizzed on my belly and had a jizz demon clean it up and run away. So, fuck Marjorie and a heavenly pigeon. Yeah? You don't Let understand. me tell you how we do it. You don't understand. How cathartic is this? <laughs> I'm having the best time. You sat around the fucking dinner table. Well, how were you touch my God? There was a feather on my shoulder. How's the Marjorie? Well, let's call this fucking three one girl. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up, fella lady. He all right, so he this is my point. So Dan wanna know fucking what's your out from this, right? He was part of a huge church called Bethel in the States. And I Googled him when I was writing this show because yeah. like, I wonder what he's fucking telling people now. Yeah. That church has disowned him and he's been extradited because he's gone too far. He's too yeah, whacked out. The gist so they've gone, yeah, mate. Just he's because he was talking about aliens. He was talking about he was teleporting up to yeah. spend time with aliens, and they were like, "But I was like, oh, that's too far, is it? All the other stuff's fine, yeah, because it makes you look silly, doesn't it? <sighs> I think a lot of it does, mate. They're so rich these churches, the evangelical churches in the south. Oh, fucking so loads! If you want to make bank, become a pastor in one of these churches. Get a good gist demon, mate. You get, like I said, you get a bucket at the end of your you preach as well. Yeah. Let's have a break. I don't know what sponsor's going in here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll just give it. <laughs> if if there's just thirty seconds of like a blackout, it's just to have, give everyone a breather. <laughs> Phenomenal. Thirty seconds of nothing coming right up. What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t-shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Weird merch? Go to haveawaredpod.com and get some then, instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't believe in the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawaredpod.com. Hey, 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 hey. I haven't had that. I haven't put my vaccine in. You know I've tried it a couple of times and then just got annoyed with the process and went, ah. Bring you, what do you mean? Bring I just in. keep getting like text messages and then it's just a fucking pain. They're like, oh yeah, you should go there or there and it's nowhere near me. And oh, I'm, I thought you meant bring it in here. You said booked. Oh, booked in. Booked. I thought yeah, you said bring in. it in. I was like, what the fuck? Because you, you, you just had your va COVID vaccination. Last week. Yeah, I had it and went straight How to the wedding. How are you feeling, baby? You all right? I had a bit of a sore throat. I'm okay. Yeah, no. I, You're a survivor. It made me late to my mate's wedding. I like got there and uh, we're lining up. It was a bit rainy on Saturday morning. Lining up outside. And then a lady comes rushing out and goes, I'm really sorry, everyone. I'm going to have to wait for about 40 minutes or so uh, because uh, three people in front of you have collapsed. And I was like, fucking hell, this is like a skeptic's wet dream. Like, you know what I mean? But what happened is the bloke behind me on the phone was pissing himself laughing because it was his three mates. They're all scared of needles. So she sort of said fainted because they were fucking pussies. They weren't actually. They go in there and sit down. Because yeah, it sounds like they've had the jab and then had a stroke. Right? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Collapse is a fucking yeah. lot more severe sounding than they fainted. They started rolling out the door. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> She's got the COVID rolls. <laughs> they opened the door up. I was like, fuck, I know her. Um, I sat down. They're like, you're not going to collapse, are you? And I was like, no. And the doctor's like, he'll be fine. And what I realised is the people working there, quite a lot of volunteers at the moment there. Yeah. So there she was. She comes up, sits down. She goes, you're not going to collapse? And I was like, no. Doctor's like, he'll be fine. Bam, she jabs my arm. She goes, oh, sorry. That's fine. I said it didn't hurt. She's like, no, no, I've, I've just jabbed you, but there's no vaccine in the needle. <laughs> Fuck I was like, sorry? She's like, no, I've, I forgot to fill it up. I was like, so what have you jabbed me with? Fucking air. That can kill a cunt. You know what I mean? If you get air put in your veins, it yeah. can kill you. She's like, no, no, no. I, I put it in. It was collapsed. And then I'm like, how did you not notice that before? So she left, came back. I got a second jab, mate. And you're telling me you're a volunteer, madam. <laughs> I've been doing loads of vaccines. 20 people dead because they're not actually vaccinated. <laughs> That's probably why those cunts collapsed. <laughs> They've been jabbed three yeah. or four times. You with got no stabbed by a stranger. Yeah. 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 And nothing can happen. No. <laughs> and people wonder why I've not booked in the vaccination yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous about getting my second one. It's I thought you weren't yet. getting it. 
I don't want to, but I also why want to you go nervous? to Corfu. Wait, hang on. You've already had the first one. Why are you nervous for the second? Because after I got the first one, they said that everyone's dying from blood clots. You didn't. They didn't. No. <laughs> they didn't. Not everyone, is it? No. So that is... And look, I'm not against it. Anyone's like, oh, two bucks. I'm not. I've had the first one. I've, I'm a fucking mental cunt when it comes to health. Right. Especially with blood clots. Yeah, my, my ma is involved with the vaccinations of people in Australia and I asked her about the blood clot thing. And she says, no, nah, it's fucking hyped up, sweetheart. It's not, it's it, every vaccine, there's always been a possibility of that. It's so minute. But then the okay. news took that and fucking blew yeah, yeah. up. So, so here's how I feel about that. You're going to be that right. minority. Yeah. That's you. That's what my brain does. It goes, Adam, you're special. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to die. You started off as a kid and you could have been something with the sax. Yeah. And this is why Adam's never been on the pill because, you know, <laughs> he's worried about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> what are you worried about the pill for, mate? What? It's not really. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, pill because they, isn't that they give you blood cuts as well, don't they? Isn't that one in a thousand as well? Yeah. Isn't that one in a thousand risks? Hey, by oh. the way, I'm not anti-vax. I'm, not. La- I'm being lazy. And like Adam has said, and it's a really valid point, once Freddie Quinn survived it, I've taken it less seriously. That's a, it's a valid point. My anti-vax comment at your mm. Runcorn gig just over the road took a bit of a turn in the gig Friday, didn't it? What? Oh, there's someone in the crowd mate, did heckle. You were them. here in Runcorn last week, weren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And and they did uh, with Adam and and uh, there was a, a guy who he heckled. You know, he didn't heckle with like a, a, like an actual word. He was like, I just made a noise, and yeah. I was like, "Fucking hell, cunt! Did you get your third jab?" Right, and then, and then I said, "He's manifesting." <laughs> I'm loving this so much. I'm just, I'm so glad that you are <laughs> tearing down my past. You know I've just noticed. What's that? You've got no hairs on this arm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so you can see my tats better, mate. That would do hairy. my fucking head than if they Tom, were my arms. Thomas, what do you mean, Thomas? Do you shave your tattoo arm? Yeah, of course, I fucking. I clipper it. I don't shave it. <laughs> I've never thought of you that. Shave, you shave one arm. Mm. You leave the other because there's no tattoos on it. We want to get into shaving, Dan. So we're going with this. Well, no, but I just, I didn't know people did that. Yeah, I thought yeah, you just got tattoos and let it grow. No, but I've got really hairy arms. No, hairy arm. <laughs> <laughs> so you think I should cover up I think hair. you've got to do one or the other. Shave so you both. think I should do both? Either do both or hairy tattoos. Fuck, now I'm going to go, what I'm going to do before I go gig tonight is I'm going to go shave this arm. Oh, you do have proper manly hairy arms, to be I've fair. I've never no, shaped It's no. taken two hours it's of got... you being in my company for me to notice it. So maybe on stage for 20 minutes, people won't, but yeah. Mm. And you're quite an observant bloke. No. No? Yeah, no. yeah. he's not. Yeah. No. What do you mean, he's yeah. No. I notice things. <laughs> you do, yeah. yeah. You do notice things, yeah. yeah. you got your headphones on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go then okay, he's fucking switched on this. Well, that would my arms be in. Why would it would do, do your head in? Because it, uh, yeah, it just, it's just no. What you think? I'm uh, more weighted down on this side. Why don't you just? <laughs> why don't you just get a tattoo of hair on that arm? I could live with that. that Wouldn't you just swim in a circle as well? The worst suggestion I've ever heard for a tattoo. Why don't you shave your? That's like when people get those fucking tattooed eyebrows on. Oh my god! It's like fucking just. I actually like. I think girls who get their eyebrows tattooed on. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Like, it's just easier, isn't it? That's what I want my eyebrows to look like. I'll have it like that forever. Are you assuming that blokes don't do it? What? <laughs> so you assume that blokes don't do fucking tattoo I life? think more women do it than men. Yeah, okay. I think there's just an epidemic in the 90s of women plucking their eyebrows to fuck. And now you've got the like to the remnants of it. Goes again. With like going, shit, I need some eyebrows. But I think it's a really extreme option, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to, you know. To, I, I to went to have school with a bloke who... Tattooed on. He um he was a very expressive individual and in year ten he shaved his eyebrows off and used a marker to draw them on. So for his birthday we got him a pack of sharpies. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, the Christian banter is fucking <laughs> killer. Hey, it? Can I drew your eyebrows on. That's it. You had to <laughs> apologise to it. You've used pen. We've got you more pens. <laughs> Helpful piss take. <laughs> You look a little silly, God forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if you'd say, oh my God, would you get like punished? Oh yeah, get getting loads of shit. So. You can't say, oh my God. Blasphemy. No. How about Jesus Christ? No, you're blaspheming, isn't it? It's all part of that. That's why now I, I thought say, blasphemy, all the time. I thought Liberated blasphemy me. was yeah. like saying, God's a dickhead. No, just using his name in vain at all. So using it as 
Uh, I guess it's for an expression. That's of, an exclamation. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not like... Could you get round it by saying, like, Jeebus Christ? No, <laughs> Christ. That sounds very close. Yeah, exactly. Are right? I know it's late. The later than usual. <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> are you okay, hon? No, could, could you get it round by saying, Jeebus Christ? <laughs> and I was like, that guy's fucking stupid. <laughs> Jeebus Christ. Can we do some other words? Yes. Yes. That's the button. Yes, mate. Hi, babe. I haven't finished recording yet. Oh, what a pro. Bye. Love you. Cheers, Sam. Be, is that going to be on the recording? Yeah. Is it? Yes. Him on yeah. the phone. Uh-huh. You'd think we'd be more professional. Yeah, that's oh, blowing my mind. That and the rose gold phone. It's blowing my mind. Uh, hi, Lids. Hope you're all well. Please, can you have a word with my wife, Steph? She now thinks she's some sort of Adam Rose super fan because I took her to Hot Water Comedy Club last week. She's been telling me where he eats, goes out, etc. after stalking his social media. She then told me about this week's past episode, this past week's episode before I'd even listened to it. Can you, Lids, tell her to back off as this is my thing? Am I being unreasonable or am I right to want my own things? Can't Listen, thanks, I, I want Matt. as many fans as possible. And if I'm going to have a stalker, I'd rather it be a woman. Bro, I'm telling you right now, it sounds like she's going to come in during your sleep time and fucking <laughs> steal your jizz. That's what it fucking sounds like. He's yeah. going to have his... He's got his own fucking <clears throat> jizz demon here. Yeah, I'll have, I'll have a jizz demon. As long as she's fed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt, your wife's just been called a jizz demon. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the best thing is, she knew about it before you did. <laughs> it's so true. If I, if we're gonna get stalked, it's God. I, re- I much prefer a, when, fi- a female stalker. Yeah, it's a bit. I don't want like you know. Knows yeah. where you eat. So does that mean because yeah? You but post- that's because he puts every meal on Instagram. Right. It's not like she's oh, a slew. I was thinking inside the house, like what rooms he eats in. I was oh. thinking she was a proper creep. Matt, he's in the dining room. <laughs> it's because he's like, oh, I've been to this restaurant. He puts it on social oh, media. Yeah, so you do. She's not roast dinner in the bath. Yeah, she's not investigating. <laughs> she's just following him on Instagram. Is that a thing? Have you done that before? Had the roast dinner in the bath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Get I'm- fucked. Oh, a beverage in the bath's quality. Bever- on the I shower. Never roast dinner in the bath. But when you've got a little, when you know you're having a little bath and you've got a little can of something. No, that's Steve S having a bev. He's talking about having a fucking roast. He gets a floaty plate. Yeah. What? Because you've got to use two hands for the roast, plate. haven't you? Thomas, right. even the few seconds when you believe us is worrying. <laughs> it makes what? me think, gee, buzz, cry. <laughs> <laughs> It explains a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm too trusting of people. It's like... He, I roasted it in a bath. Really? We haven't really even talked about yeah. you fucking indoctrinated me into the fucking <laughs> Liverpool fan club for a while. Oh, yeah. Have I told you about that? He's a Liverpool fan because yeah. he spent an hour and a half with me. He's the most easily led person Oi, ever. it was... He groomed me. Don't yeah. go... Listen, unless you want to, I wouldn't go and go dancing at gay clubs. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Because I think you could have an unusual night <laughs> with one of our dads. We, the first night we met was at <laughs> Top Secret Comedy Club when England were knocked out of the World Cup by Croatia, right? And we stood around having a drink, and he's like, I've been trying to get into the EPL, which is the oh, Premier League. Oh, God. And he was like, me, my girlfriend's family uh, are West Ham fans. They really want me to be a West Ham fan. Uh, I live in Nottingham, so maybe I'd support like Nottingham, but then I'm in the EPL. And then he's like, and Liverpool came and did an Australia tour, so maybe it'd be Liverpool. And I was like, you should be supporting Liverpool. It's the only one that you're ever going to win anything with. If you're going to be an EPL fan, then you <laughs> might as well be one it. that might win something at some point and y- you'll enjoy it. Which more. franchise should I choose? At the end of the night, he was like, at the beginning of the night, he's like, yeah, I don't know. By the end of the night, this is 100% true, and you can ask him, he'd bought himself the home shares and booked a stadium tour. <laughs> <laughs> 6 p.m. I don't know who I'm going to support. 11 p.m. You'll never want the world. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Thomas. I did the tour as well. It was great. Of course you did. Yeah. The next day. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Got a train up there. Mighty. Nah. Yeah, for real. That was very. You were very convincing. I didn't do much, to be honest with you. Yeah. They're I, quite good. I, Fucking, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, another have a word. All right, lads. Can you have a word with my, uh, every bell tower who tries to make their job sound more sexy and important than it actually is? I live and work in Mercia, Spain, and teach like the sensei did as an English teacher. My official title is Director of Studies 
at a private language school. But if anyone asks me to tell them I'm just a fucking teacher because I can't be bothered to get into the unnecessary details of it all. And if anyone asks how my day went, I always reply with a blanket, fine, because I know deep down nobody really gives a flying fuck. But then when I speak to people, especially back home in the UK, they really love to go on and on about the nitty gritty of everything that has happened. And the main topic of conversation I have with people seems to be work. Maybe it's just me. Maybe have a word with me for being an impatient prick. Do you ever find this with other comedians who don't seem to have anything else to talk about except comedy or would happily start a work conversation at a funeral? Uh, so that's from Kev. I'm sorry, but in Kev, Mercia, Kev has complained about having to talk about his job in detail. He's fucking spent the time to email in about his job in detail. <laughs> <laughs> he literally. Uh, to be fair, we can't take the piss out of that too much because then no one will email in. And if you've got to have a word, have a word pod at gmail.com. We are sort of running out of them. But if we were like, ah, this prick's written in, they'd all end with that. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a, I can see the hypocrisy of it. Like, ah, these people just talk about the job. Let me email about my job. Yeah. So but the, the, the job title thing is sort of a, a semi well trodden in stand up, isn't it? How people like, you know, like I'm a cleanliness uh, technician. You're a fucking a window cleaner. Like it's yeah. just, there is there is a there is a snootiness about it. You've yeah. done some teaching. Yeah. You don't you just teach her. Just teach her. Yeah. Well, well Thomas well, teaches in London. So he's only going to be called a teacher, isn't he? Because that's our word for it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm really confused. Well, what are you you teach Adam's being a dickhead. No, I'm not. You teach in London, so you're not going to be called Sensei or whatever it is one was. Oh, oh I'm with you now. Called teacher. Yeah. Yeah, t- t- yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't fault you. Oh, do You're you right. mean in terms of like you've never, the job title? Yeah, yeah, you've never. Nah, fucking PE. Oh, you teach PE? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know you taught PE. Oh. You're a PE teacher. You were a PE teacher. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. What's so, your favourite sport to teach? Oh, do you know what? That's a tricky one. Uh, Not just American football? I really, do you know what? In Australia, when I was teaching there, I, I did do my final year of uni. I tried to teach American football to a group of year 10s. What a fucking shit show. Yeah, 17 concussions later. Oh, mate, yeah. But we did it as flag football, you yeah, know. Of course, yeah. No hitting, but fucking... You weren't, like, padding them up, like, <laughs> this is why we play <laughs> every fucking inch. Yeah. You you had a really bad concussion at one point, didn't you? I've had two really... Three. Yeah, three really bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> and memory loss. And I believe in Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. So it up. the worst one I had was back then, 2012... Uh, and it was back when I was involved with the church and all that, and got knocked out. I didn't, so I remember I was a wide receiver. I was running long. The, ball, the quarterback got hit as he threw it. The ball went up and it got lofted up. And then I had sort of broke down and realized the ball's going to get intercepted. It got intercepted. I turned around and this linebacker had just, who played for Australia, he just ran a dirty play, ran straight at me. Last thing I remember was seeing his helmet and thinking, fuck. Bang, helmet to helmet. The oh, ball was nowhere near you. Nowhere near me. He was like, I'm watching the ball. There's the wide receiver. He'll definitely get it, and then I'll hit him. Then the ball was nowhere near you. And he you cut, didn't have the yeah. ball, and he still completely cleared you out. Fucking annihilated me, depleted me. Like I was like proper feet up in the air, bang. And then, but I got straight back up. I don't remember any of this, but I got straight back up, went to the change rooms, felt happy as Larry apparently looked fine. My mate was like, you all right? And apparently I was like, yeah, 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 fine. Sat down. And then we were, we were down at half time. So the coach is giving us a total spray. And then my mate said he was sat across from me in the locker room and he just saw me sort of just do the thousand yards stare and zone out a bit. And he's like, Greeny, you all right? Apparently I just stared at him and then sort of just looked down at the floor and then just snapped and just went, why am I wearing this? Why am I wearing this? What the fuck is this? Threw my helmet, started just stripping off, and they realised, oh, fuck, he's got concussion. So in comes the trainer, comes, grabs me, pull out. They can hear me wailing in the other room while he's <coughs> fucking... They took the team out. Oh, I get stripped down. Uh, I've stripped down myself down to my fucking jock strap, and uh, they've called my, they've called my, my ex right, and uh, to let her know what's going on because I'm going to have to go to hospital get ch- checked out. I didn't know who the fuck I was. I put her on the phone, and they <laughs> said... Um, uh, it's, it's your wife And I was like What? She's like Who's this? She's like, it's your wife I was like I don't know I was fucking married She's like Yeah And I was like Oh how, Is it going well? 
<laughs> she's like, oh, fuck. Okay, this is bad. And then uh, I was like, how did I get here today? She's like, you drove. I didn't even know. I was like, fuck, I got my license. I got knocked back to when I was like 15. <laughs> And then, yeah, I then uh, they left me, they took me off the phone and then they called my, my folks to come pick me up. And uh, as they did that, they then lost where I was and I'd fucking started wandering back through the, the from the change rooms, the little passage into the stadium. I was walking out through the little passage and there's me and my jock strap walking out in front of people and they're like, ah, greedy! And they came back and put me back inside. But that was a pretty bad concussion. When did you sort of, when were you all right? Uh, about... 45 minutes to an hour later, it felt like I'd woken up. I've been conscious the whole time in terms of talking and stuff and freaking out and all that. But you don't but remember any of that? No, no, no. This all got told me after. And then, yeah, sort of I was in the car and my old man and I sort of was like, oh, fuck, what's going on? He goes, oh, I'm taking hospital, mate. And I was like, what happened? It was really weird. It was like I'd woken up. But, yeah, I've had a yeah, I've had three concussions. The other one I had from America Football was a guy dropped his knee on my head when I was on the ground and I remember feeling a fizz go down the back of my neck. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The bear, bear. And I stood up and everything was like green. All I could see was green, the color green. I could see you, but it was like I had like a filter of green over top. And my mate came up to me and his numbers were coming out of his shirt towards me. And I was like, he goes, you all right, mate? And I was like, he goes, that was a bit of a late hit. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I said, your numbers are weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're going on the bench, and so yeah, on the bench. <laughs> Take five. Do you know, it's one thing if you. <laughs> My numbers are weird. If you get, you're paid. not going to catch the next one. Sit down. <laughs> we'll get you in for the. <laughs> get you in for the final quarter. <laughs> Don't worry about that. If you're getting paid millions, you can see like why you take that risk. But you're just playing amateur Australian local fucking American football. Yeah. It's not, a, not, not it's, worth being... You don't get any financial support at all. You're buying in to play, and it's fucking expensive for that equipment. And then when I played here, uh, yeah, did rotator cuff, and that's when I went, nah, fuck it, I'm not playing anymore. There's too much. There's, you know, it's amateur. And that's why people get injured more, because people are out there to fucking murder people. Yeah. Like, you play some fucking... Because there's no mad- VAR... No. There's no video assistant referee going, he's just kicked his head in. You can't there. get fined. Oh, you yeah. just have people fucking trying to take your shins out. That's the thing with the American football. As soon as you put a helmet on and pads and everything, people, like, they are incredible specimens. Oh. And they run so fast and they weigh so Bro, much. And London. they turn themselves into human torpedoes. They do. They're trying to teach it out of them. Yeah. But this, the, the, it's in them to, like, just hit him you, with everything. You get it's so dangerous. When you're hit, it, it fucking, it, you feel it. But you also can get hit sometimes and you, it absorbs so much so you like feel a bit invincible. But when you're doing the hitting, because you're the one aware of the impact, you're the one going through, fuck, you feel invincible. And you genuinely, like, I remember I, I'm, I've always been skinny, but I was a fucking skinny wide receiver, bro. And I depleted this linebacker who was running, just blindsided him, just came in, bang. And it felt, I felt like a god. I'm like, no wonder these cunts want to play defense. Yeah, yeah. Because they just want to wipe people out. It's an amateur sport. That's what they do. It's like the Sunday football here. People who... Yeah, I would never play Sunday league here now. Because they just want to break your legs, no? I, I can't be asked to get my leg broke for a game of fussy. I'd rather just play... You're with your mates. Seven who, aside. And you trust, yeah. you trust, yeah. Mm. I've got into golf now. Like, <laughs> mad got into it. But, like, I just love playing a sport that's not going to fuck me up. Yeah. It's a good, you know, getting older. <laughs> Playing golf. Hey, it? oi, it's pretty fucking addictive. Like, yeah. Your, your dad doesn't play American football for a reason. Like, dads like golf, don't they? Where they just get to wander around, twat a few You're balls You're a dad. Around. Do you not like golf? I could, mate. I could see, Adam played I could a lot, see you know. the attraction. I could see the attraction. But I'm not there yet. He played... We, I Dave. played quite a lot when I was a teenager, yeah. I really want to get back into it. I'm going to play a little bit this summer. Yeah, fuck yeah. In terms of this guy, I mean, people are always oh, yeah. going to always gonna build up their job and everything. And what he was saying is, that, do you get annoyed about comedians who can't talk about anything else? I'll be honest. I love a good shop chat. I it's like it. a place, though. Yeah. Like, I enjoy spending all night talking about comedy sometimes. With the s- right people. Yeah. The most annoying thing in the world, and I know there's a couple of newer comics who are regular listeners to this, is when, for example, we're at Hot Water, and it's a, a Wednesday night, and you're on doing new stuff, and I'm on doing new stuff, and Paul Smith is headlining, and Danny McLaughlin's comparing, and Freddie's on as well, and then there's two brand new open spots in, and we just want to have a pint and a laugh, yeah. and fuck around and call each other dickheads. And then it's the nth 
degree of inquisitiveness from the new acts going, how do I do this? How do I get here? How do I... It's like, chill out and just have a laugh for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, we, you don't Be normal. Need the, Fucking just the enjoy degree. the night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't really talk shop with someone you don't... It's, this sounds so cunty. Respect. Respect. Yeah. If you, like, And I'm, everyone's trying to work it out and I, I've been there and I understand the process. One of my least favourite things is being in a a dressing room with an act who's new or I've never heard of. There was this girl that was, I think it was the frog about three years ago. And her whole thing was like to prove that she was valid pro and everything. She's doing an unpaid 10 and she wasn't a professional act. I've never heard bigger talk. It was all status. It was all bravado. It's the most boring, like, yeah. Offensive shit. You're like, what are you trying to prove? Prove like, that's the worst thing. Talking shop when you clearly know you don't know know what you're on about. Yeah. That's even worse than the, the new act going, Oh, you're doing a podcast? Oh, Paul Smith, you done well with the videos. <laughs> like I can understand. At least they're not going, I know everything. Talking shop with someone who's talking yeah. bollocks. Oh my god. Yeah, I would literally rather go out into the crowd and talk to some guy about plumbing. About like, <laughs> tell me about what you do. <laughs> Fuck me. No, like <clears throat> There's what? nothing more annoying than the 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 newer act who's pretending that they're a pro, who's yeah. pretending that like this sounds cunty in the same way. I know what you you mean. I'm not trying to be. It'll actually help people when they're talking. If you're a newer act who's doing this, and you're doing it around big comics a lot, trust me, they find it annoying. Is when you're like, we're the same. Because I've been doing it six months and it's going okay. And you've been doing it 25 years and we're the same. We're, yeah. the, we're both comics. We're the same. The what? You know what it's not, like? It's when... not even just comedy though, is it? That's every industry. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> yeah. It happened to me you a hot water. You can see it as well. If you're watching that, you can see the experienced comic being like, just talk to me normally. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can also see some of the other professional comics in the room go, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Paul does that a lot I remember when I first met him at Hot Water years ago and it was a Monday night and I just saw him in the corner and then so we were just chatting about shit but it's, I remember coming in and just seeing him on his phone because the people there are talking about the most boring shit and then only a couple of years ago we were at Hot Water and they he's there every night and he is and there was an act who because Paul's lovely right he's such a lovely bloke and he'll give you the time of day we sat there and it was almost like the battle. You said, I'm a nice bloke. It was almost like the battle between me and Paul being the nice bloke, you know, because everyone slowly but surely started leaving the room because this open spot was being so fucking whiny. Complain, oh, you know, I just feel really under the weather and I don't know how I'm going to get through my set. And oh, it was just like so much fucking drama. And I was like, I just can't. This, they're unbearable. I'd have been so out. Yeah. Like, everyone was, but I was just sat there going, mm hmm, mm hmm. And I thought, I'm just going to hang back here, you know, watching everyone on the TV and whatever and, and chatting away. And then everyone slowly left until it just got down to me and Paul. And Paul was on his fucking phone. <laughs> and so it technically was just down to me. And then Paul left the room and it was just me with. <laughs> That was the worst. Yeah, what, I've got what, no did you, what did you sign up for, Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> did you end up living with them? I'm back I in a cold. A cold either. Back Try this new medicine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Right. My ear, this is how I know it's been a long pod. My ears are hurting from wearing the headphones. That's when it's hurting. been. A, yeah, they're just, I feel a bit squashed. Should we tell them about the London date? We've got, uh, it's on sale. I think... I'm going to record a very quick pre-thing to go to the start of the episode. Nice. So they actually already know about this. But, yeah, the it's Underbelly be Festival. We're doing Have a Word Live at the Underbelly Festival at Cavendish Square. It's not on the South Bank this year. It's a Cavendish Square. Uh, Lids on tour. Come and see us in London. It's going to be a beautiful late summer's evening. It's the first, sh like, second, only the second live show, isn't it? It mm -hmm. will be the first link in the description on your podcast app or if you're watching on YouTube it'll be in the YouTube description it will be the first link won't it Carl and Finn it will it'll be the first link the Underbelly Festival it's going to be me and Dan we're going to get a special guest or two we're going to do stand up in the first section have a little break and then do a live podcast in front of hopefully a sell out 500 seat Spiegel okay. tent awesome. it's going to be great uh, the boys will be with us and it, it, it's our second ever live show the first one outside of Liverpool it's going to be great yeah Sign up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash have a word pod. We have got uh, our ghost hunting special coming up very soon. Thomas, where can we find you? 
Thomas Green Comedy. Give me a follow on all the socials. Everywhere. 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 Nice one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, like, like. Please buy tickets to that underbelly thing. I've never been invited to this thing before <laughs> as a solo act. And I'd fucking love it. Because there's still people in this fucking industry who's like, oh, Adam and Dan have got their little thing that they're doing. And it's just their little thing. I'd love it to just sell out dead quick. So even if you can't be asked coming, just buy a fucking ticket. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely that I'd works. love to sell it out just to shut everyone up. Don't make us look like northern knobheads in London. Like, oh, we thought well, the people would turn up. Please come. come. If you're from within <laughs> three hours of London, come. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll do. Go ahead. 